Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we've got episode number 31 for you, and we're going to be covering all things across the NFL in week three. And then the back half of the episode, we are going to be doing our final NBA offseason rumor mill because now that we're about, I think, only like 10 days away from the preseason or so, starting to pick up again. As always, Damian Lillard trade news is never, ever not going to be in the cycle. But it, it sounds, I don't want to be too hasty, but it does sound a little bit more concrete. There's at least more sources, multiple GMs. So they may be cooking up a little something there. Maybe, hopefully, he might be getting moved soon. We can put an end to this saga couple of other trade rumors to get through off-season signings. Um, so we're going to get through all of that. As always, if you are on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you're on audio platforms, go ahead and give us a five-star rating and pre-download the show. Helps us out a ton. If you can see on the screen, go ahead and follow those socials that you see at the bottom, at Off The Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off The Glass Podcast on TikTok. We're going to go ahead and get right into it, as we always do. How are we doing today, Dan? I'm doing better than the Broncos. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'm doing a lot better than them. So I'm doing fine. That is crazy. And that's, that's exactly where we're going to start. We're not going to beat around the bush. We know what the biggest storyline of week three is. And no, that's not just me trying to bury the Cowboys loss. <laughs> and genuinely watching this game on Red Zone. I think we both was watching it on Red Zone at the same time. And it felt like there was like a glitch or something. It was like they would score. They would cut to the other game, show like two plays, and they cut back, and the Dolphins got the ball in the red zone again. Like Bro. I didn't know what was going <laughs> on. <laughs> like I had to go back and watch like what is happening on these drives for the Dolphins to keep getting the ball back, and it just no real offensive production from Denver. And bro, this Broncos team, I don't know, and I mean this in the most non disrespectful way possible. As the defensive coordinator, right, Vance Joseph, how? How does he still have a job? Like, not that I want him to lose a job, but, right, you basically, you should have had the scoring record broken on you. They opted not to take that field goal at the end of the game because whatever, unwritten rules. Class. If I'm, bro, you already got 70. What are we talking about here? I'm about to say, you might as well break it at that point. What's what's three more, bro? What's three more? Um, and this game was this game was uh in Miami, right? Like, yeah, bro, get a home crowd, something to go crazy about. I mean, they, um, I mean, 70 points is something to go crazy about already. 73 is better, even more. That, that is true. Damn, um, 70 is bro, that's a disgrace, man. That's crazy, yeah. And and like, I, you can't even say because Mike McDaniels tried to, to turn it on, like, a you know, we're not we didn't want to chase points. And that was kind of clear. Like, they pulled Tua out in the fourth, and Mike White came in and threw a touchdown pass. Like, what do you want? Bro, they're getting hooped they're on just by this bench. It's just better than you, bro. How, how y'all give, like, a 60-yard bomb to, to – his name is Cho- – I think his name is Anderson Robbie, Chosen. It, Robbie Robert? Chosen now. It okay. used to be – it, it was, was Robbie Anderson. Then he went right. to Chosen Anderson. Then no, I, actually, he changed the Robbie. It was like Robbie with like an IE or then Robbie to I did a Y. See, he changed something it like that. five times. <laughs> or it was It's more changes than the Ocho, Ocho Cinco to Johnson back to Ocho <clears throat> Cinco. Bro, it's crazy, bro. But like yeah. you gave up a 60-yard bomb to him, and then you give up like a, another 70-yard touchdown run to A-Chan. He, he's having it. He wants us to be called A-Chan now, not A-Chan. Mm-hmm. A-Chan, like, bro. They, they put the bench in, and yeah, I give up two long touchdowns immediately. That's Come why on, I say it, it's really with no disrespect. Like, Vance Joseph has been in the league as a coach for a long time. I don't necessarily think he's a horrible coach, but it, this is not – this can't be right, bro. Any coach should get fired after letting up 70 points, bro. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. 70 points is ridiculous. Like like you said, like, bro, I'm, I have freaking – Tyreek Hill notification, like every you know how ESPN notifies you every time you're in the red zone. Like they like you said, they would score and I'd be like, Yeah, Tyreek Hill's in the red zone. I'm like, huh? What? Like how? And and that was all day, constant. They're always in the red zone. 
if you go back and look at all three games they've played this year, right? Raiders game was relatively low score and they end up losing by one, 17 to 16. Um, but Garoppolo looked good, very pretty good for most part in that game um, and had that very, very clutch uh, drive there at the end. He was dotting up Jacoby Myers the whole game um, in that first game. But, okay, 17 points. All right. Then they were up 21-3 to on the Commanders, and Sam Howell turned into prime Peyton Manning, started lighting them up. And then the following week, right, those first two games, you at least can be like, what more can Russ do? At this point, it would not have mattered. No. Nah. Give up 70 points. Granted, the Dolphins, unquestionably the best offense in the NFL right now. I think that's evident. But mm-hmm. we came up here after week one, and we were calling for Brandon Staley's job because they gave up 36. I don't know, man. Like, 70 is crazy. And the way that they were doing it, it just – it it was unbelievable really unbelievable to watch they had they scored twice off the same little shovel pass screen a chan is like you saw that play where he had like three linemen pulling for him and they yeah. take like half the team in the open field like nobody on that defense is tackling ps2 is getting cooked which is again it's tyreek but like supposed to be one of the Still, better players in the league he's getting fried the the broncos third leading rusher H A- Chan ran for 203, two touchdowns. Raheem Mostert ran for 82 yards and three touchdowns. Their third leading rusher, Chris Books, ran for 66 yards. You want to know how many rushing yards the Broncos had in this game? <laughs> I'm guessing under 66. <laughs> yes, bro. 54. Man. Like- 54. Bro, how can a defense go from being literally one of the best units in football last year, all of last year, like one of the best? Like it was – you cannot score on them. You can't run on them. You can't throw on them. Like lock down to this this year. Like I don't – coaching or not, how does that happen? Like you can't go from top three to bottom three. Like how does that happen? I'm, I'm genuinely asking the question. Like, I have no answers. I don't know how – I don't know what it is. How did that happen? I, look, I don't know either. Like I said, Vance Joseph is not, this isn't like some new, you know, brand new coach. He's been in the league as a well-respected coach. Like some of his most prominent since he was there with uh, Gary Kubiak with, um, with the Texans early in JJ Watts career, spent some time in Cincinnati, went to Miami. Then he was the head coach of the Broncos. Obviously that didn't go great. I think he, only won 10 games in two years and then was fired. Um, and then obviously his last stint before this one was in Arizona with JJ Watt again at the end of his career, um, these last last two seasons. And that defense had players. They played, you know, they weren't the greatest defense in the NFL, but Buda Baker, Buda Baker looked good. Um, obviously, JJ Watt was doing JJ Watt esque things. Like Sean Payton believed in him enough to give him this spot. Like you said, I genuinely don't know. I've never been in a locker room, and the both of us has been been in multiple locker rooms at various levels of football, all the way from Pop Warner to college. I ain't never lost by 50. I don't even know what you like. What is that like? What are you talking about? I've never lost room? by 40. I've never no, I'm lying. We know. Listen, when we, and Pop Warner, I'm not gonna lie. We went down to Florida. And we played them do them do swole little oh, kids with yeah. dreads, bro. They was running through us. I'm not gonna pause, but like they was. Yeah. <laughs> hey, was, yo. Like, <laughs> no, it was going crazy. But I, even then, I don't think we lost by 40. I think it might have been a little 30 piece though. I'm not gonna lie, but 40, 50. At that point, you, you, my pride gonna kick in. You're just not gonna do that to me. I'm sorry, me personally, that's just right. not gonna happen. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just, I'm not giving it up like that, bro. That's just embarrassing to be a grown man, a grown football team. Like, y'all are also grown men. Like, right. we got to do something here. There's no it's way no I can give way. 50 points it's or lose no by 50. Way. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. The, the interview Garrett Bowles in his locker after the game and asked him, like, what are the emotions running through his head? And he was like, just basically just like, bro, it's garbage. 
I, he's like, I don't want to be here. That's not exactly what he said, but he, mm-hmm. his exact words is really like, I've been here for seven years and all we've done is lose. I'm really tired of it. I don't blame and like, him. I that's crazy. Too. Seven years. And like, you just lost by 50. But that no must progress. Have, like you said, like, bro, I'm like, I mean, obviously we're not in the NFL. We like, whatever. Like, I, I don't know what it's like to be on a team. Like that's bad, but like, I feel like every team I've been on in my whole life, we, even if we weren't the best, we were never like, right. We at least I'm, was average, right? I don't we have ever been right below 500. Right. Like, I like on a I team, at least in high school, the teams we were playing on. No. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, I don't know how that feels. So I can only imagine like, I mean, obviously they're getting paid millions. So, I mean, that counteracts that a little bit, right? But, like, to be a competitor, bro, and to go out there, it's like nobody wants to lose. Like, even obviously, we, we're gonna talk about the Cardinals soon, but like, even teams that's supposed to be tanking, players don't go out there and be like, Yeah, like, let's just lose. Like, that's you just don't do that. So, it's like Mm-mm. to lose over and over and over again in an embarrassing fashion must be it must be the worst, bro. I'm gonna be honest, that's it must suck. Yeah, so uh, like Broncos fans, I mean, honestly, I've seen Broncos fans. Coming after Vance Joseph after the Commanders game, again a lot of them, yeah, yeah. a lot of it because they remembered his stint going. He went five and ten, um, and then six and eleven, or five and twelve and six and eleven um, in the two years that he was head coach, and then got fired. So I don't think a lot of Broncos fans were necessarily happy to see him come back in the first place, and so that they weren't really feeling it from the beginning. This had to have been the cherry on top for that defense to give up seventy. Again, like you said, with the playmaker, PS2 is one of the best corners in the league last year. Arguably the best. That's what people say he's the best. Right. And Tyreek just torched him. Again, it's Tyreek Hill, but that's what like that's what your lockup corner is supposed to do, at least make it hard. Tyreek went for, was it, nine catches, 157 right. yards, and a touchdown. He's got 412 yards in three games. He, what does he on pace for? He has to be on pace for two thousand. He's there's got to be more than that, really, right? Because because it's <laughs> remember the first week he was on pace for like thirty, <laughs> like thirty five hundred. Crazy. Let me look at his. He two fifteen in the first game, forty in the second, and one fifty seven in the last. Um, why can't I just look at the total? Oh, here we go. Four hundred twelve. I'm tripping. He's averaging 137 yards per game, which if he plays all 17, 2,300. So <laughs> he, he said he was going for 2K. He's keeping his promise. And hey, look, in this game too, no Jalen Waddle. And y'all still got – it could have been worse. Bro. It could have been even worse, bro. Like, like yeah. Man. Yeah, now that's just uh... – a. I don't know. It, it, to me, also, I mean, we I have to talk about. I'm surprised we haven't said his name once. Sean Payton, like you said, that last year was basically all in the coaches. Like that's what you were insinuating. Right. Like, last he came season, out and threw Hackett under the bus, crazy. Completely. Last season was like, the worst, the most historic, historically bad coaching ever. Mm-hmm. That means that if it's just the coach's fault. Then you, a quote unquote good coach, should come in there and y'all should be good. You okay. guaranteed the playoffs. Y'all, Hackett ain't lose by 50, bro. I just about to ask you about Hackett did not I lose by 50. I ain't see Hackett get 70 put up on him. Like, I understand you're an offensive guy, but at the end of the day, you're the head coach. All of this falls on you. Like, exactly. I don't care. All of it falls on you. So to go out there to talk all this talk before the season, talk about how your players are good. It was the coach's fault last mm-hmm. year. Guarantee the playoffs. You coming in, supposed to be this Hall of Fame coach. It's like, y'all not looking good right now. Granted, I will give you credit. Russ looks a little bit better. He definitely it, does. But, I mean, honestly, it, it what it looks like, it looks like he came in there and was like, we're just going to make Russ better. Forget everything else on the team. <laughs> we're just Our focus is to make Russ better, and everything else got worse. So, yeah, Sean Payne, uh, you got some you got some explaining to do, my boy. Hey, you definitely got some explaining to do. You better not lose to the Bears next week. I tell oh, you right now. my you better not lose to the gosh. Bears next week. It's no way that, like, he, someone has to go if they lose to Chicago. <laughs> That game is gonna be so disgusting. Yeah, like that game they play be- Bears and then the Jets. Like, come on, bro. Come <laughs> on, bro. Yeah, you gotta win both. You have to win both, bro. You already lost to the Raiders. Like, come on. 
Yeah. We'll get off the Broncos real quick. Um, Cause like, I guess it's not even a, a ton of analysis to do when you give up 70 points in that fashion. Cause what I really also want to get into is Tua is the front runner for MVP right now. Um, and it's rightfully and deservedly. So he's probably also going to win comeback player of the year, as long as he plays remotely at this level for the rest of the season. Um, and he's looked as good as advertised by what Dolphins fans were expecting when he had that stretch before the first concussion last season. This is kind of the trend we were seeing. Very efficient offense. Explosive with run after catch. He was fine. He just was very decisive with the football. Could hit you with short routes and then you let Waddle and Reed get to business. That's exactly what they're doing right now. And no team seems to have any answer for it. Like he's already thrown for a thousand yards in the first three games of the season <laughs> um, with a yeah, thousand yards, eight touchdowns, two interceptions, a 121.9 quarterback rating. He's completing 71% of his passes. In this game against Denver, he completed 88% of his passes. He was 16 for 16 in the first half. Right. Decisive, accurate, and purposefully not doing too much because you have the playmakers around you. All I need to do is get the ball to Tyreek in space, get the ball to Waddle in space, get it to Robbie Chosen in space. Screen game with Mostert is hitting. It's hitting with A-Chan. Like – I don't, you don't have to overcomplicate anything. A lot of that you have to give credit to Mike McDaniel for. Um, as much as we praise Kyle Shanahan for being one of the best play schemers and designers of marrying up the run in the past, because McDaniel is a descendant basically of that Shanahan system, you see a lot of that influence in the way that he schemes offenses together. I think we talked about it last time that Tyree kill motion that they love to do where they kind of line them up offset like a wing back. So smart. Like it's so hard to defend. It almost always results in the fact that you, I mean, like not that you really want to press him anyway, it's just hard for defenses on the back end secondaries to, to pick that up. And then again, you're, he's always getting a free release, the fastest player in the NFL, like, and they run everything off of that motion. So you have no idea what's coming. So big, big credit to him. Uh, this Dolphins team looks I mean, like, they look scary already, but 70 in an NFL game is – I mean, that's the most a team has put up since the 60s, bro. Like, it's a – yeah. They're um, they're scary just because they're all they're also – they can do so many different things. Like you said, like, their run game is looking great. Like, the game against New England – like, they're winning in different ways. The game against New England, New England yep. takes away all the big plays. It's like, all right, cool. We're going to – you want to play three safeties, we're going to run the ball. You have one mm-hmm. less person in the box. So – we can beat you guys running the ball. Moster looks good. Moster looks like a great looks running. Great, back. Yeah. yeah, he looks fantastic right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. We always knew he was fast, but he looks like like he can handle a little bit more of a workload. Like he talks about, I think he's talked about putting on more weight, um, mm. more muscle this offseason so he can like stay be more durable. And obviously that's coming into fruition right now. And then obviously you got H and that's just <laughs> goes right along with the speed they got over here in Miami. Mm-hmm. So and like you said, they've, they're doing all this basically without Waddle. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't Waddle even in the first two games he played. He obviously he was playing well. I'm not saying he wasn't doing nothing, but he definitely played well. He's not like killing you. It's really been Tyreek and right. Mostert and Tua. That's mm-hmm. really what it's been, and then them spreading the ball around. So Tua looks good. Tua looks a lot better than last year because even in the games that he was playing very well in the beginning of the season. He was still short on a lot of throws. He looked like he didn't have the arm strength. There was games where they played top competition, top defenses, and he just like like shriveled up basically. Mm-hmm. Like when that Chargers game pretty much got exposed. Yep. So, but then he plays the Chargers this year, lights him up. Um, I'm very very excited to see what this Bills game looks like because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people um, from the Bills like are overreacting to that game one. Obviously, it was bad. But the Jets are Josh Allen's kryptonite. They've mm-hmm. obviously the Bills have looked like one of the best teams in the AFC since that game. So them going up against the Dolphins, that's going to be the game to watch. I might actually just watch that game and just yeah. get red zone. I might genuinely just watch that game. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what's go, uh, what goes on next week. 
Yeah, that might be the matchup to see in week four. Um, and if the Dolphins can get that win, start 4-0, and you already have two division wins too, and you haven't played the Jets yet. Like, they're anyway, on a good pace. If they beat the Bills, let's say they beat the Bills in not convinced, like they win by a touchdown, mm-hmm. 10 points maybe. What's stopping people from saying that they're the best team in the AFC? Nothing. Like, Literally. They, I, I don't know if there's much stopping them right now. That's what I'm saying. I mean, who they've played the Broncos who sucked. Patriots whose offense sucked mm-hmm. and then the Chargers whose defense sucked. So I guess you can, you can kind of say not saying they were like easily supposed to win all those games. Like mm-hmm. they obviously they look good. I'm not trying to take credit away from them, but like, I think if they beat the bills, it's like, all right, bro. Like the, this is, they're already a contender, like you said, but like right. they can easily say they're the best team in the AFC. Right. And th- that would be the second elite defense that they faced along with the Patriots defense. Mm-hmm. If they're able to, Like you said, in that game, just take whatever the defense is giving them. They got the drives when they needed to. The run game looked great. The Bills are probably going to play something similar. They're going to stay in a lot of too high, try to keep everything in front of them. So you're probably going to see a lot of the same kind of play calls, heavy emphasis on the run game, heavy emphasis on short curl routes, drag routes, slants, screens, just trying to get the ball to the playmakers early. Um, If they are able to, like, handily score on this Bills defense like what defense outside of like it's just like in the AFC like what defense is going to really be able to fluster this offense this is I don't Buffalo, think there's the any way. right if they're able to do that in Buffalo what in the AFC is really stopping them it's from a defensive perspective yeah no nope. yeah. I I would argue right now the Patriots probably have the best defense in the AFC their defense looks Ridiculous Christian Gonzalez looks like an absolute steal of a draft pick at 17 right now. He's mm-hmm. looking like he'll probably be an all pro corner one day, if not very, very soon. Yeah. Um, so like they already handled them pretty well. And like the Patriots had their opportunities. Like we said, if their offense was a little bit better, maybe they had the, at least a chance to go down and tie off the Christian Gonzalez pick, but the Dolphins still were able to move the ball very well on that offense. Like, if the Patriots aren't able, if Patriots and Belichick aren't able to get it done, it's gonna be tough for any other AFC defense to really handily stop them. So when you look at teams like the Bengals, who is a typical contender, are not looking that way right now. Um, and then with the Chiefs, even their offense hasn't looked as explosive as it's looked in past years. It looked better this last week, but it was the Bears. So, like, I feel like me and you could go out there and, and throw for two fifty against the Bears. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, maybe that's the thing that gets them going. And like, if they played each other, then it does become a like you do have to think about well, how good can this Dolphins defense be? But we touched on it a couple times in the last couple episodes. They're about to get Jalen Ramsey back. So I, I always forget that. I'm be honest with you. It, I, I think right now today. Right, September 26th, the Dolphins are the best team in the AFC. They're looking that way. I don't know if they're necessarily coming out of the AFC entirely, but right now today I think I can comfortably say they're the best team in the AFC with how the Bengals have played, with how the Chiefs have played, the Ravens, like all of the top teams, even the Bills as well. Like They're the only ones that have looked really consistent week to week, and that offense is terrifying. Yeah, I could, I can. Um, that's not a crazy take to be honest. Like, obviously, if they play, like, like you said, if I, I wouldn't pick them right now to win it to come out of the AFC because if they play the Chiefs in the playoffs, like, I'm not betting against Mahomes. But that, that is one thing I will say. Um, I do think right now it's the Dolphins and the Chiefs mm-hmm. just because the Chiefs' defense has actually looked pretty good. They look like way really good. and advertised. Exactly. So it's like if you're the Chiefs' offense is the problem, and you're telling me like. I Pat Mahomes, Kelsey's back. Like they right. will pick it. I mean, they yeah. already picked it up. Yeah, like, I about to say I'm not. I'm not concerned. There's, yeah, no, not at all. If they're Mahomes defense, has like, got the full trust, bro. You could start slow. Six weeks, I don't care. You're gonna yeah, find it. it. Yeah, I'm about to say he has. A, he they can, he can have a bad year. The next year, I'd be like, all right, cool. He's probably gonna win MVP because he's pissed right. off. Like so, they they he, they got my full trust. But yeah, those are top teams in the AFC for sure. Yeah. Um, Let's pivot. I mentioned it at the beginning. I'm not going to run from it. Cowboys, 
Cowboys lose by 12 to the Cardinals. Josh um, Dobbs, baby. Look, Steeler legend. I got a ton of respect for Josh Dobbs, and I don't think it's going to get credit. He's played solid football the first three weeks of the season, bro. He's played good football. He's played better than solid. He's played just flat-out good football, good quarterbacking. He's right. doing right now. No turnovers from him. He's completing 72% of his passes, 549 yards, two touchdowns. He's got a 98 quarterback rating. He put he put up 16 on the commanders, and they were in that game all the way to the very end. It literally took a Sam Howell rushing touchdown to give the commanders the lead in that game. We saw what happened with the Giants. They put 20 on them in the first half, and the Giants had to come back from down 21 and kick a game-winning field goal. They could easily be 3-0 right now. Very well could be. And again, I'm not saying none of this to give excuses to the Cowboys because at the end of the day on paper, there isn't really one, bro. Y'all don't have a reason to be losing to this Cardinals team, which in a lot of people's eyes should be tanking anyway. So to go out there and only put up 16 points, especially – after all of the red zone trips that the Cowboys had in this game, it, it's unacceptable, really. Um, five trips to the red zone, only one score. You can't have that in the NFL. Nah. Nah. And, That's how you lose to the Cardinals. Right. And this is what we talked about almost two months ago at this point when we did our NFC East preview. Something that I said was, what I think is getting was getting overlooked at the time was, I don't necessarily think it was the wrong decision to get off of the Zeke contract. I think it was definitely time to give the keys to Pollard. There is no short yardage back there in Dallas. And that's something that, for whatever you want to call it, like obviously Zeke has lost a step. He's lost a lot of the burst. The vision was still there. And they used him a lot in the last – Two years of his time in Dallas, short yardage, read the hole, pick the oh, hole, all forward. And he could many times get four or five yards. He again hit the line of scrimmage, but he's just rumbling, stumbling forward every single time. Um, so I mentioned that that was going to be a concern, and it showed. There's multiple times where they're not just in goal to goal situations, we're on the three. On the and Pollard is getting stood up, and I'm not fully blaming it on him because it, it, it does not help. This was the most banged up the offensive line has been all years. Um, I know Biotish hurt his hamstring before the week. I think Tyler Smith was out. Um, so there's a lot of backups there that entire, you know, for this game across the entire offensive line. It obviously doesn't help, but again, at the end of the day, you got to be able to punch the ball in in those scenarios. You put the Eagles in those short yardage situations, they're getting it into the end zone. For sure. 100%. Just point blank. You got to call it as it is. So uh, my my biggest takeaways from this game are I'm not super, super pressed. Like I said, I think the people are overlooking how good the Cardinals have played. Not that they're a great team, but they're not the – I don't know if they're the worst team in the NFL. That's what I was gonna ask you, but I'll we can talk finish the Cowboys first. I do have a question about the Cardinals. Yeah. But um <clears throat> yeah, the, the red zone is definitely a concern. Um how much do you contribute uh the Trayvon Diggs injury into the defense playing bad? Not out of like they were attacking our corners, but just out of like we just lost our all pro corner. Like they're kind of like it's gonna be an adjustment period. And it's just yeah. the emotional side of it is like bro, we lost him at practice, like he broke towards ACL at practice. Like that mm-hmm. just that just sucks. You know what I mean? That just sucks. Um, also, I don't know how much you contribute that to the defense playing bad. And like, like you said, the red zone, it, it's a problem. I'm gonna be honest. It is a problem. You said that you don't have a short yardage back. As much as I love Pollard, as much as he helps my fantasy team, it's having Zeke for a real like as far as real football is smart because obviously he's the big bruiser back. You guys also don't have like Dalton Schultz, I feel like was big in the in the red zone for you guys as well. He was like he was a guy that was scoring for a lot many of years. Touchdowns. Yeah. And just the tight end position in general is always like having a really good tight end in the red zone. Like look at Kelsey, look at Mark Andrews when he's healthy. Like yep. having a good tight end or, or at least a solid tight end in the red zone 
is very very helpful that's normally where they make their money and um mm-hmm. I actually like Ferguson a little bit, but obviously just, just as right now, like Dalton Schultz does seem like he's hurting a little bit not having him in the red zone. And then Mike McCarthy, I feel like a, a lot of times in the red zone, the best coaches are able to scheme something up to get guys open and score. So it's like, like you see, I'd say in the red zone right now, the charges look good. Like they're always like having some sort of pick play. There's some sort of misdirection, some sort of like, they're just being very creative around that red zone. And that's how mm-hmm. they're, they're like turning a lot of these into touchdowns. And, um, and I don't know, like, it's just even the plays that the Cowboys are making in the red zone are like goal to go. It's like, no one's open. Like they're running simple routes and just no, no one's open. Like there's nothing creative to get guys open. So mm-hmm. that, that's a little bit of a concern for me moving forward. But yeah. at the end of the day, it is a trap game. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not. I didn't view the game and be like, "Oh, Cowboys are frauds," just like we thought. It's just like there are people that are doing that though, and they can get yeah. their jokes off. I mean, that's what happens when you lose in the National Football League. But that, like, these games happen every year. You oh, the, yeah. the Chiefs lost to the Colts week two last year. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's it a happens, trap game. right? It happens. So I, it's good to take. You have to understand what you can take from this, and what I think the biggest takeaways. Red zone offense is a problem. Like you mentioned, the scheme is a problem because, again, I think that McCarthy really does want to be able to run the football down there. But with the O-line issues and then, you know, Pollard is not the biggest guy, not the biggest bruising back, that limits it. And then the passing plays that we saw down there, there's a lot of just fade shots, you know, like nothing super schematic to try to get something open, some rollouts, some flat routes. Something different other than we're about to throw a fade to CD, we're about to throw a fade to Gallup. Um, because people were complaining about that the no call on the, the PI. As a Cowboys fan, I saw that as a clean play. Like whether he's he was face guarding him, but he made contact really about the same time that the ball would have been caught anyway. So yeah, that seemed like a PI. seemed like a bang bang play to me. I don't have any issues with how that was refereed. It shouldn't come down to that, bro. Like that play does not define the game. Uh, so yeah, red zone is a problem. Obviously, the injuries are not helping, and then the explosives that the Cardinals are able to get on de- on the offensive side of the ball for them. Too many big runs by James Conner. Run defense was a problem last year. James Conner is still one of the bigger bruising backs, but he was getting off way too many yards at a clip on runs. And then Josh Dobbs is hitting Hollywood Brown and these 15, 20 plus yard routes. You know, like chunk plays pretty consistently um credit to him some of them are tough catches there he's manned up on Gilmore like you gotta tip your cap to some of them but back to your point about the digs injury like I'm sure that has to play some factor into it and even with Dan Quinn partially on how you play call now on the defensive side of the ball because he felt a lot more comfortable with Diggs and Gilmore being there on the outside to just really get super aggressive let the pass rush get after people and you just play bump and run, you know, man, too high, cover zero, whatever. Um, Cause you trust that your guys on the outside are not going to get beat like that. It's a little bit different when it's Deron Bland out there. And I think Deron Bland is a great corner. He's been great out of the nickel. I think he'll be able to make that transition fine. I think the defense as a whole is still good enough that it's not going to be as massive impact. But I think all of these things combined is why this game ended up being the way that it is. Um, so I, O-line health will help with the red zone stuff, I think, but it's going to be a concern because it's over the last two games now, I think I just had it pulled up, um, 11 red zone trips. Um, they only have three touchdowns in those 11 trips. That is not a, it's not good enough. Below 30% in the red zone, you can't. that can't be enough, bro. Yeah, that's definitely going to pick up. Not Without- especially not when – you as Mike McCarthy is saying you want to have these games under control. You want to have it slower paced. So you don't get that many possessions, bro. You have yeah. to make the most of them. You're going to have to start converting for sure. But yeah, the Cowboys will eventually be fine. Um, one of the things I was going to ask you too, because I did see a couple, I've seen a couple Cardinals fans bring this up. And I've seen a couple of people in general just bring this up. Um, I mean, obviously, everyone who watches, who's been watching football, sees the Cardinals does not look like the worst team in football. No, they really don't. And like, obviously, everyone coming into the season, rightfully so, is like, yeah, they're tanking. They're mm-hmm. tanking. They're gonna get Caleb, maybe pair him with Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, they're tanking. But it's like, should they really tank though? It's like, if Kyler comes back, 
if Kyler comes back, Kyler's not trying to lose games, especially not to get replaced. What? <laughs> Kyler, not. So if if you're not if you're not resting him for the season, Kyler comes back. You guys already look kind of good. Now I don't know if that's because people just see you as a Cardinal, so they maybe play down to you a little bit, which is also what I thought the Cowboys probably did. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if he comes back, you guys are not. I like. I just don't. There's worse teams than you guys. Like I don't. I don't think they're the worst team in football. And it's like you're gonna tank. You're gonna get Caleb, but you're gonna have to trade Kyler and still pay him all that money. So it's like you can't really build a roster around your rookie QB because you're still paying the guy that you traded. So it's like it is kind of a weird situation. It's not as easy as like uh like uh like the Texans last year, where mm-hmm. they just they had Davis Mills, like you're not paying him a lot, you're not paying him nothing. So it's like it's easy for them to just get the number. Well, they didn't, but like it's easy for them to try to get the number. Right. You know what I mean? This situation is just weird to me. It's not it's, it's not black and white. Mm-hmm. If, especially if Kyler comes back at like week five or something like that. It's it's just a really weird situation. I think what's a different option as well is like, let's say Kyler comes back, right? The, the, the record is not going to be great. It's not going to be a playoff team. They'll have probably at worst a top 10 pick. Who, who's to say they can't make a play to move up and get Marvin Harrison Jr. and pair him with, with Kyler? And then, I mean, I like that. Right. You keep Kyler. Now you have Marvin Harrison Jr. and Hollywood. Trey McBride has been coming on as a young tight end for them. Now they liked him. You still have Zach Ertz there. He'll probably be moving off soon. But got a young offense. You've got James Conner, who, credit to him, still running the ball very well um, in a situation where I don't think a lot of people were expecting him to be performing this well. The defense has playmakers still. Buda Baker is still there. Um, was it Kaiser White made some plays on Sunday as well? Zaven Collins, like there's there's some guys on both sides of the ball that are worthwhile, and it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be as much as a rebuild. I think as people have built it up to be, which I think basically what you're saying is that they really do have the option to have Kyler come back, and then they're not in as bad of a spot as I think people were envisioning at first, or even me really. I was not expecting this team to be this competitive. I thought they were gonna be like, bro, what? Like, they, you telling me you bring in Josh Dobbs a month before the season? Now he's your starting quarterback for the season. And then you got this guy talking about some damn. Did you take the bus today? Like <laughs> his head coach. But it's crazy because they're really playing hard for this guy. Like they he are. might actually be a really good coach because he might be. They're playing well. And he's just a cornball. But <laughs> I don't. I, it was just interesting because they're in. A, they're in a kind of an interesting spot as far as what people thought they were going to be before the season and what they actually are now. But who knows? We could be completely wrong. This, this could be them just overachieving for three games, and they could suck for the rest of the season. So yeah. who knows? Yeah. Um, and let's pivot to a team where I think the the world now knows for sure, and without a shadow of a doubt, um, that they got to get a different guy there at, at QB. Um, Jets lost 15-10 to 10 to the Patriots. Absolute defensive. Yo, I did, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about another team. That's bad. I oh, thought you no. were talking about the Bears. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I just thought about because I'm like, dang, like, do it, people, but it, it makes sense. It's nah, the same thing. It's That's a lot of people out on fields, too. I'm more <laughs> out on the coaching staff, but. No, that's just funny because it's like, bro, there. That's how bad he's playing for them to be like, yeah. My first, that was the first thought. I was like, oh yeah, the Bears stink. <laughs> this is crazy, man. That's crazy. But yeah, you, you go ahead. My bad. Nah, look, it the both of them, both <laughs> of those offenses really is bad. Bad. I think the only bright side for the Jets is that this defense is damn if they ain't trying <laughs> they trying oh, yeah. <laughs> they're trying absolutely uh, and like i said the, this afc east matchup is always tightly contested 15 to 10 is like scrapping clawing bro um and look i was up here and i said i think zach wilson needs to get the shot he didn't look good against the cowboys but it's the cowboys Said he wasn't gonna look good against the Patriots. I, I, I I've seen enough, bro. Um, it's not even a, it's not a talent thing, like, and I don't know that it's ever necessarily really been. It, it, bro, the decision making is just it. It can't. It cannot continue, bro. It's only gonna get worse in the locker room. It's only gonna get worse in the media, which is 
I mean, it sucks that this is happening in New York of all places because he's going to get lit up every day. Uh, Joe Namath went out there and said he was, what do you call him, worse than than well poop or something like that? Mm -hmm. Just like, yo, you really just... And that's crazy because from what I've heard, like Joe Namath has been a really an unwavering supporter of whatever is going on in the Jets organization. Throughout all the turmoil they've had since he was a quarterback there in the 60s, He's never really come out and bash somebody. So for him to go on Zach, like on a radio show in New York and say that he said he's seen enough from Zach Wilson, he's done. He doesn't know why he's still the quarterback there. He's fed up. <laughs> like the only good quarterback in y'all's history of the last 60 years is frustrated to that level. Um, it is telling, but watching back the, the film from this game, I really think you sum it up in in one play, that last fourth and 10 where you have to get this first down and the game is over, and he throws a, like, one-yard flat like route flat, yeah. to Conklin, and he gets tackled, and it's like, bro, he's just you, – you're not even giving your team a chance. Like, I, I would rather, as your – as his teammate – as a, if you were a Jets fan, as a football fan, bro, take the shot. I don't care if it's a pick. This is a, you don't get this first down. The game is over. And his explanation was just like, ah, you know, I thought if I get to him, I'd be able to make a guy miss. And Tyler Conklin. <laughs> like, it's no disrespect, but it's like, come on, bro. It wasn't even like we're going to get Brees in space or Garrett in space. Like, we're going to get our tight end in a flat route. Against With my own, them. so the one of the best secondaries in the NFL, one of the best fundamentally coached. You think they're not gonna hustle to the football? Four from ten, like come on, bro. I thought Tyler Conklin was gonna make somebody. That's funny. <laughs> that it, is funny, bro. It's it's crazy though. They have no rushing game existing at all. Brees Hall, twelve carries, eighteen yards. Dalvin Cook, eight carries, eighteen yards as well. Like. This offense has nothing to provide right now, nothing at all. And it's boiling over on the sideline. You saw Michael Carter got into it with his position coach, Garrett Wilson getting into it, frustrated on the sidelines with Zach's play. Sala came out after this game and said that Zach is still the unquestioned starter. No, it can't be anymore, bro, because his team is too good. They are way too good. To be one and two right now, way too good to be one and two. And that's why I was saying Zach had to go from the rip because it's like, even, even, even the the miracle that this guy is solid enough to be a starter, that's not gonna come to fruition until at least like what well, week six because Zach said they were gonna play the Cowboys. It's mm -hmm. gonna be bad. They're gonna play the Patriots. It's gonna be bad. I think next week they play the Jeez. Chiefs defense, who Sunday actually looks football. good. Well, it's gonna be bad. Then they play the Eagles. It's gonna be bad. Like he, like you didn't, you just didn't have the time for him yeah. to get a good match. Like if they played, like obviously Aaron Rodgers goes down week one. If they played, I don't know the Bears week two, and then the Broncos trash defense week three. Then I'm like, all right, let's see what he does because those defenses are bad. He might have some time to throw. Like you know what I'm saying? You might have the luxury of waiting. You gotta get somebody else in there. You just got to because. Like you said, the team is too talented. They came into the season. I think it's they're getting so frustrated because they came into the season like, oh, yes, we don't got to deal with that, Zach Wilson. Anymore. Like, and rightfully him, so, right? bro. Rightfully so. Because this yeah. is literally – I'm sure everybody on this team feels deja vu. Our yeah. defense our defense is one of the best in the NFL, and our offense could not move the ball if their life literally depended on it. And, like, y'all had Super Bowl hope. Like, y'all minds was like, we are like we can win the Super Bowl. Although it's like when Aaron Rodgers go down, it's like – our, all our hopes is gone. Like, yeah, I know Garrett Wilson pissed. Like, Garrett Wilson was about to have, go crazy. You know, he's mm -hmm. like, if I don't make some miraculous one hand fade catch or a, take a 60 yards or take a slant 60 yards to the house, it's like, he can't do nothing. Brees is pissed because, like, why even think about like worrying about the pass game? Was Zach Wilson there? Just stop the running. You're fine. It's just tough. It, it really is just tough. And, like, Zach Wilson. 
he he might be the worst starting quarterback I've ever seen in my life. Like he might he I think he's like there's like something going on like some stats going on around like he might be like one of the worst quarterbacks in NFL history. So, last season, last season, I can definitively say that was some of the worst quarterback play I've seen legitimately at any level of football. Pop Warner, middle school, high school, college, NFL, like, bro, he looked so much like a deer in the headlights in most of those games last year, throwing, bro, at people's chest. He's throwing a nobody right at safeties, horrible reads, no good decision making. It's like, if you don't have good decision making, the arm talent doesn't matter. What good does it matter? Like, care if you could flip your hips and throw cross body 60 yards. You're throwing it right to a safety. Yeah. So can't you know teach I mean? this mental stuff, bro. You just don't got it, bro. Yeah. I, I look, I, I had slight faith that Rogers in his ear, he looked good in the preseason, he looked more composed. And maybe it could snap in game manage. No. No, 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 no. It's it's done. They gotta they gotta give that up. Um, yeah. and, and going back to what you said, right? Zach Wilson has the 33rd worst QBR this year. Do you know who has the worst QBR this year? Let me take a guess. Yeah. Justin Fields. It is Justin Fields. Zach Wilson has a 26.7 QBR. Somehow, some way, Justin Fields has a gap there and is at 21. Um, so we can go ahead and get right into the Bears game, um, which was basically the Taylor Swift show. It, it was. It was a Taylor Swift concert, I guess. And, NFL was, was milking that crazy. You saw, bro, I saw a report that Travis Kelsey's jersey sales were up like four, 40 or 400 percent, something crazy. But yeah, bro. bro I saw was, a breakdown of an astrology report for Travis Kelsey I matching. Seen you seen that? that? I seen that, bro. Y'all are sick in the head. That first was of all, crazy. First of all, I take it back. I want no Swifties on our heads. No. Facts. I want facts. no smoke. I want you know, no smoke at all. I want nothing to know. Yeah, got if, it. Bro, if, if Taylor Swift fans find this, y'all got it, bro. Y'all got it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, y'all you got imagine it. that? You I'm imagine going, that? I'm peacefully, y'all got it. Y'all, y'all got imagine it. that? They find this pocket. Like, nah, bro. Y'all got it. Couldn't put that clip on Twitter, on TikTok. It's, it's over yeah. with. Hashtag but, Taylor Swift. They going to be. <clears throat> All over it. Yeah, no, I want no smoke, bro. But still, it's just they were milking, they were milking that crazy, bro. And I knew, like, honestly, if they had told, if they had gave me enough warning that she was gonna be there, bro, that Travis Kelsey, uh, uh touchdown prop would have been smashed. Oh, bro. What? Going right on that one. I'd have put the over on the yards, the receptions, the touchdown. Bro, come on, man. I would. Y'all gotta give us a heads up, bro, so we can right. make some money off that, man. Right. That was easy, easy money. And the touchdown he got was free. Like, Mahomes forced it. He's like, I got to get him a touchdown. Bro, I knew for a fact he was going to force it. Bro, honestly, when they were at that red zone, I'm like, bro, he's not throwing to nobody, nobody else. else. He, will, yeah. he will throw it out of bounds before he yeah, before he throws it to somebody else. Bro, He's going to get Kelsey in his end zone. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Chiefs route the Bears 41-10. to 10. The Bears now have started the season 0-3. Um, have put up 20 points, 17 points, and then 10 points. Um, lost by multiple possessions in all three games. Justin Fields on the season, like I said, is the lowest rated quarterback in QBR. Um, this year, he's only completing 58% of his passes. He only has 526 passing yards, three touchdowns, four picks. And again, one of the biggest things that I think we touched on after week two the rushing game is not there, not nearly what it had been in the previous two years. Last year where he ran for 1,100 yards, he was averaging seven yards a carry, had eight rushing touchdowns. Now he's only averaging four and a half yards per carry, significantly lower volume, only one rushing touchdown through the first three games as well as a fumble. Um, I, I really want your perspective again Another week from a former quarterback to just view how you look at it. I I continually cannot fully blame him, bro. This coaching is the play calling. Everything as a whole, I think, is just a horrible situation for him. And it goes back to the Bears' history at quarterback. The fact that they don't, like, have any – who's the best 
quarterback in Bears history. Jay Cutler. That's disgusting. That's terrible. If franchise that's been this historic for this long, Jay Cutler. That is terrible. They're, yeah, their track record with QBs is not good whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's not like a full-on Zach Wilson situation where it's like, bro, this guy's just done. Like, we've seen flashes from Justin Fields. Right. And they're not – like you said, they're just not – even if he sucks throwing, even if he, like, can't really read correctly, it's like they're just not using him in a way that, like, makes his strength shown. Like, we've seen it. Like, they literally seem like they changed their whole offense that one week, one random week last year where it was like, you know – this guy's pretty fast. <laughs> like, right. It's for QB like, power. See what happens. Yeah, exactly. And he just destroys the league with his legs. And it's right. like that opens up throwing lanes. That opens up stuff throwing the football. So it's like, yes, they're not helping him at all. Um, But, I mean, he also doesn't help himself. He doesn't help himself. He definitely yeah. doesn't. I can't put all the blame on the coaching staff because, bro, it's just it's got to be better. It, it has to be better from him. The, like this past game. Bro, 99 yards passing in a game where you're down by that much is crazy. The game script, you have to pass, bro. You have to pass. All I know is, bro, this next week is, bro, they just gave up 70 points. The Broncos, yeah, they just gave up 70 points. If Yad can't move the ball on them, or at least I just need, I just need to see something. Like, I need to, yeah, God, DJ Moore for what? Like, DJ they Moore don't for- use him right either. They feel like DJ Moore is like, I could have stayed in Carolina for this. Like, right. he's back in Carolina, basically. Just different. Just it, it, different and Bryce colder. needs somebody that could get open. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's just in a colder Carolina right now. Yeah. So it's like. <laughs> colder Carolina. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, this is, it's just so bad right now. This offense is painful to watch. It really is. Justin Fields is painful to watch. Because, it, like I said, at least last year he was running the ball. Like, maybe, I don't know, maybe defenses know, like, all right, cool, if we can contain him a little bit, they can do nothing offensively, which is kind of true. If, they're, if he's not making plays happen with his legs, they have nothing. And it's just funny because, like, a lot of people put their MVP bets on Justin Fields, which even if he did break out this year, I didn't think he was going to MVP. I, I, was I was not. Yeah, I was not with that bet. Yeah, I missed me with that one. But – People was putting MVP bets in. People were like, oh, yeah, the Bears could make the playoffs and do this, that, and third. It's like they just didn't make that step. They just didn't. He just didn't make that step forward. The Bears team is still the same old Bears team, DJ Moore or not. It's sad, bro. It's not sad. I really do feel bad for Bears fans because, like, going into the season, I could see the hope. I really could see, like, why I would think, yeah. like, okay, this could be at least different. Aaron Rodgers I bought into it. It feels is my dynasty QB. I'm sitting here thinking I'm getting mini Lamar. We're running for 1100 every year, bro. Oh, yeah. I think I'm thinking the Russian is going to be there. That's the thing that's getting me. Like, I'm at least thinking, like, all right, cool. The Russian is going to be there. Like, right. worst case, even if he doesn't take a step forward as a passer, he's going to run. He's going to run the ball. But they're not even doing that. No, so and the opportunity is just it's not there. The play calling is like uh, we, we talked about it last week. The screen, multiple screen passes, not even multiple, the same screen pass from, like, your own two-yard line is crazy. To throw it is crazy, if not crazier. Neither side is helping each other out in this equation. And if they lose to the Broncos, I I don't know how much uglier it can get, bro. Like, that – like you said, they have to at least move the ball on that team. I'm not expecting anything from that Bears defense necessarily, but – if Justin Fields can't have a modest day, an improvement over the past three weeks against Denver, bro, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Did they get a new OC? Uh, I think so. This past year, um, that might be the problem. It's, isn't it? E- Eberflus is the head coach. I always get it confused. I think he's a. Uh, uh, I don't. Yeah, know. he's the. He's the head coach. Um. So then their offensive coordinator is um, – I always get the names mixed up, bro. Oh, no, this might be his second year. Lou Getze. No, this is his second year. His second year. I remember that name. Yeah, Lou Okay, then, then that, that – to me, that's what I don't get because it's like you you were there when they were having the success in the second half of the season. Y'all were still losing, but the offense was – offense was putting up like 30 points a game. Like, they were putting up crazy numbers. I remember they had a couple, like, right. really good offensive scoring outputs. 
But didn't they beat the Chiefs last year? I don't think mm, they beat. No, I don't think they beat the Chiefs. Let me see something. No, nah, because they were still losing though. Like they were, they. I mean, obviously they were the worst team in the league, so they were still losing. Yeah, they they lost a lot of games. Still, they were just putting them like the offense was just putting them numbers. Uh, they didn't they have some sneaky win last year. Maybe they I'm beat. Sure. I think they beat the. No, that was two years ago. I'm they lying. beat. Oh no, it's the Niners. They beat the Niners week one. That's what it was. Oh okay. Yeah. Beat the Niners. Oh, that was in, that was in the monsoon. That was in like the crazy rain game with Trey Lance. Was, yeah. I don't even count that one, but. Yeah, it's like, bro, you were there. You were the offensive coordinator when you guys did have the offensive success. Like, you literally switched from, like, all right, cool. He is a running QB first. Had success. And now you just go, don't go back to that. Like, you don't build off of that. That's weird to me. But what I will say is, like, he, they, they might change it around. Who knows? Because they did it in – I don't even remember what week it was last year. They changed it up. They might do the same thing and say, like, all right, look, this passing stuff ain't going to work. You need to run the ball. They might do it again. Who knows? I, I don't understand why you would go away from it. Like, it doesn't. They probably thought he was going to take this step, like be like a great passer or something. Like they get like they see you see like the, and I guess everyone, including myself, kind of falls into this trap of like, all right, Josh Allen, you get Stephon Diggs, this guy sucked, now he's the best. <laughs> Jalen Hurts gets AJ Brown, now he's great. Like people just think, all right, cool, you bring a superstar receiver in, all all is good. This guy that right. was trash. Is is gonna be great now, so I guess it just doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. That's not, it's, it's not as simple as that. You see, they're like changing his mechanics. They made him switch which leg he has up in the shotgun. You just he looks uncomfortable. Yeah, he doesn't. So he I, doesn't look like he's playing free. Right. All of that. I don't know. I. It's just a bad situation. I don't think it can be saved. I don't think Justin Fields in Chicago is going to work, and I don't think that's an indictment on his career. I think it's going to be a rough spot to come back from, but I the talent is – the flashes have been too big, rushing alone. But even, like, going back to his time at Ohio State, where he had Olave and he had Garrett Wilson. Like, I granted, it's college, but, like, there's a reason he still has picked this high, bro. The talent is there. I'm not fully out on him as a player, but I think I'm out on this pairing with Chicago. They got to reset. Just just signed Trevor Simeon officially I, to their practice I was squad. Just about to say that, bro. He's better than Zach Wilson. That's the crazy part. But it's like, yeah. bro, why don't you go sign sign like a good, good like free agent, like at least a right. decent one. But whatever. Kaepernick but, is trying to get signed to their practice squad right now. Kaepernick need to give it up, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I was with Kaepernick years ago, but it's I like, was, but it's it's been a long time. Bro. It's been a while, bro. Like that movement. Like you, you're not playing anymore, bro. You're not good anymore. Even if you were like good enough to be in the NFL, like what was that five, seven years ago almost? All right. That's there's it. a legit <laughs> it's it's a fair enough argument now for people to just be like, bro, he hasn't played in mad long. Before it seemed like ah, I seemed like y'all are, y'all are blackballing him. But now right. it's like I I can't even in good Kate faith be like, Yeah, he's gonna come in and hook. It's like, bro, you have not touched the NFL field in seven seasons. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, bro. I really I don't, don't know about that one. Yeah, you need to calm that down, bro. It's it's over with. It's okay. Like you did your thing, but it's over with, bro. All right. But uh, but yeah, Justin Fields. I I think there. Th- I see what you mean because if if he was with a good offensive mind, I I think that they'll use him correctly and he would show good flashes and at least mm-hmm. be decent. But just in general, him being like, like I don't think there's ever a world where he's like a superstar quarterback. I don't think there's ever a world where he's a top 12-ish quarterback. You know what I mean? I think, it, mm-hmm. like, best case scenario, at least the way it looks right now is, like, maybe they get a new OC, maybe he goes to a different team where they use him correctly, and he's just, like, a, a an elite rushing quarterback who's, like, can right. kind of throw a little bit. And, like, that's yeah. just his ceiling. So, who knows, man? Who knows? Right now it's just not looking good. Let me ask you this, uh, because it's well documented that Mahomes has beef with the Bears because the Bears drafted other quarterbacks in front of Mahomes. Was Trubisky that you're right? Mm-hmm. Um, is this story play out any differently? Like, what does Mahomes look like in this offense? I mean, that's a crazy hypothetical. It's like that's a wild hypothetical. He, I feel like it, the, the gets to the root of the question of like how much, especially for a rookie and a young quarterback, how much of that goes to just 
their situation. Like he went into a place where he had Kelsey and Andy Reid and got to sit behind Alex Smith. And then you like compare that to Justin Fields, who's getting thrust in to a bad team, not a great defense, not a great rushing attack, especially this year. Different OCs from his first season to his second year. Doesn't really get anything going until halfway through his second year. Now they're trying to do all this weird stuff with changing him up. Like he didn't really get a receiver until this year because I don't even want to count the Claypool stuff last year. So it's like, how much of that do you feel is dependent on situation versus talent? Because like, like let's say the Jaguars didn't fire Urban Meyer. Like what does T-Laws look like right now? You know what I mean? That's what I was going to bring up, yeah. Yeah, right. absolutely. I was uh, sorry, I mean, cut you off, but that was literally what I was gonna say. I was gonna be like, honestly, it was gonna be like a T law situation because, bro, it doesn't matter how good you are, it doesn't matter how great you are. Like, sir, like when it comes to playing quarterback in the NFL, it's like there's things that needs to go right. You know what I mean? Like, you have to have a good situation. You have to have at least a decent O line. Um, got to got have weapons, and then the coaching. Like, coaching matters, bro. Like a lot of people, especially a lot of casuals, just think that like coaches are like, ah, they just call timeouts. Like, nah, bro. Coaches, coaches can make or break players, bro. Like, 100%. honestly, we need to like as much as we tell tell um, players that they're bust. Like, we need to like put more pressure or like give more. We need to discredit the teams a little bit more. Is what I'm trying to say. Like, we need yeah. to blame the teams a little bit more because it's like, bro, some of these teams are ruining people. Like, like he never fired Urban Meyer. Like, he could have ruined t-law like at like and then people would be like oh yeah t-law's a bus he lost he just he never was able to make it it's like bro if he got drafted to if he didn't have the worst head coach in football he probably would have been better and right. obviously we've seen what happened when he doesn't have the worst fo- or worst quarterback or worst coach in football so it's like situations definitely matter like you said pa- patrick mahomes as great as he is now probably no i know for a fact he wouldn't be as good now mm-hmm. um, if he went to the bears but it's like he he might not have panned out because it's like, bro, like you said, he sat behind Alex Smith, which is great because he learned behind him. He learned behind a good quarterback, not just mm-hmm. like a bum bridge quarterback. Alex Smith was a really good quarterback. Yeah. He was an Andy Reid who's like right now looked at as one of the best offensive coaches ever. Yeah. Um, you got Travis Kelsey, you got Tyree Kill. It's like the situation is so good. And then he was just good. So like it just all just worked out perfectly. Mm-hmm. So it's like you put that in the the Bears probably wouldn't have worked out all right yeah so yeah last thing i'll say on the whole justin fields thing i'm not out on him i need to see him in a different spot because his coaching is it's not it right now but but we're talking about t law let's get to their game and wrap up some of these, these last couple of week week was it week three games mm-hmm. um jaguars also get upset um lose by 20 to the texans and i think I, i've seen enough now CJ Stroud is like that, bro. Not to say that he wasn't going to be, but, you know, we I, I always want to be co- like slow to the judgment for any of these rookie quarterbacks for a lot of the reasons that we just touched on because situation, like circumstance makes up a lot of what you're going to see, especially like really early on. But to be fair, like he doesn't necessarily have the best situation. That O-line is banged up. It's not the best. He's standing in there. And he is delivering the football. Four touchdowns, zero interceptions, 98 quarterback rating on the season, completing 64.5% of his passes, just under 1,000 yards throwing in the first three games. And in this game alone against the Jaguars, he's completed 66% of his passes, 280 for two touchdowns, 118 quarterback rating, bro. So he is looking very comfortable. The transition for him has been seemingly very easy. And this Texans offense didn't look great in the first game against the Ravens. It definitely picked up a little bit in their, their second game there against the Colts. Um, And in this game against Jacksonville, it's the second week in a row, him and Tank Dell have looked like a very legitimate one-two punch in the NFL Tank Dell in this game had five catches for 145 yards and a touchdown. Nico Collins looks great. Robert Woods looks good. Damian Pierce is still one of the toughest runners of the football. He just he get hit a yard in the backfield every single play. Um, so, so 
big, big upset, really, I think, for the Texans to come out there and pull that one off um, against the Jaguars team that, you know, obviously had was in a very, very tight game with Kansas City the week prior, had a couple of, you know, touchdown chances that just didn't go their way. People couldn't get their feet down. I think Zay Jones had two touchdown catches where he just could not like four, toe yeah. tap. Yeah. Um, so his Jaguars team is not a slouch by any means. And this Texans team kind of moved the ball on them very efficiently. Their defense played well. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I've been very, very impressed with CJ Stroud. I was not expecting him to be this comfortable, this efficient, this fast especially with his circumstances right now. You know, absolutely. It's uh he looked good. He looks great actually. Um he's been playing like the best rookie quarterback so far. I mean, actually AR played very pretty well, but he obviously didn't play this last week cuz he was hurt, but yeah, he looks good. Um I mean, I guess we could kind of underrate the weapons they have over there like Tank Dell looks legit. Nico mm-hmm. Collins is I mean, Nico Collins has obviously been like always a solid receiver. Robert Woods is an old veteran. Yeah. Um. So I mean, he has a little bit of weapons over there, and they're letting him throw the ball, which is interesting to see. Like they're letting a him lot. throw. Like, isn't he leading the league in like attempts or something like that? Like probably at yeah, forty-four attempts in the game against the Ravens, forty-seven against the Colts, and then thirty this past week. Yeah. Like they're they're letting him. They're not easing him on slow. Like they're letting him throw the ball. Um. So yeah, Texans look good. Um. But my thing is the Jaguars. Like, what's what's going on? Like as a guy who picked the Jaguars to win the division as a guy mm-hmm. who thought the Jaguars could challenge for the one seed, a guy who thought T-Law can be a sneaky MVP candidate. That's not looking great right now. Cause even, even in their win against the Colts, like it was. That game it, was losable. Very it was, losable. It was definitely losable to another rookie QB. So mm-hmm. it's like, I picked you guys cause the division is supposed to be soft. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, y'all are you, you struggled against the Colts and then you're losing to the Texans. It's like, bro, what's going on? The offense with all these playmakers, you got Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk. I know Zay Jones. I don't think he played this last week, but Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, uh, ETN, Bigsby. It's like, y'all have the weapons. Y'all have the coach. Y'all supposedly have the great QB. I don't really know what's going on. Um, Honestly, I think I might have to, like, rewatch this Jaguar game to really see what's going on. Um, But, yeah, it's just... It's been a slow start to the season and definitely not what I expected. Like, Calvin really started off hot, and then these last two weeks has definitely slowed down. Mm-hmm. So maybe you guys have to do a little better job to get him involved because, I mean, he is the number one over there. But Target's been there, too. They Like, the connection just is not – they haven't been able to get it down. I, I talked it up a lot with the Chiefs game. Like I said, they just had a lot of really – nothing bounced their way. Yeah. All the opportunities that they had to score, just nothing really fell their way. The Chiefs lucked out in that one. Against the Texans, bro, I would love to see the full all 22 um, because watching this game live, like it's always going to be hard to tell what's really going on unless you're getting that wide, you know, end zone shot. Mm -hmm. But like you said, all the pieces are there. They have the quarterback. They got the coach. Like it, it should not be struggling to only put up 17 points against the Texans. My thing is, like, bro, y'all supposed to be this one of these really, like, like we said, I picked them to contend for the one seed in the whole AFC. So it's like, if y'all are struggling against the Colts and the Texans, when y'all play these top teams, I mean, obviously we've seen what they did against the Chiefs, but I don't think the Chiefs were fully the Chiefs yet. Like, I think Kelsey was still a little bit limited. Like, obviously mm-hmm. we see what they did when they're at full strength this past week. Um, so if I, I think if they play the Jaguars again, I think it's a whole different story. Like, I don't think that game, they only put up 17 points. But, um, listen, when y'all play these top teams, I don't right now, y'all don't look like y'all can compete. Like, it doesn't look like you guys are on the same level. But I do have faith that it will pick up just because I think that T Law is talented. I think that their weapons are like they have a lot of playmakers over there. Like, I like all of their weapons as far as just being a really good player. Mm-hmm. And then I got, I got faith in Doug Peterson. So I do think it will pick up a little bit. Um, the defense kind of worries me because you're giving up a lot of points. But, um, yeah, I, I think it'll pick up. I'm hopeful that it'll pick up. Yeah. Um, let's get through these last couple games. Definitely want to give you the opportunity to talk about your Steelers, who was kind of winning in dominant fashion and then Just a low, little key, bit. low key almost gave it up towards the end, except Josh McDaniels, you know, what the heck he's doing, bro? <laughs> but, 
Uh, fire, bro. Like, bro, these dudes get so many chances, bro. I swear to God, it's crazy. Yeah. It's to kick a field goal down eight with like, what's like <laughs> two, two and a half minutes left or something like that. Yeah. Nothing about the game changed. You're gonna have to take your shot. If anything, you're about to just get the ball back with way less time and no timeouts. Like, and like and, our offense ain't great to where like, oh, if we give the ball to Kenny Pickett, we might not get it back. Like, bro, we, I, it's just that was just so dumb. I was so thankful though. I'm like, because they lined up for it the first time, and I think we had a penalty or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, cool. Like damn, we got they they got a, a blessing real quick. Then they lined up again, and they were closer to the end zone this time. I'm like, okay, like thank you, I appreciate right. it, bro. It, it it didn't make no sense. I don't know what he was thinking. Mm-mm. Uh, but I Kenny looked better in this game. I won't say he looked great. He looked better. Um, Najee looked. I would also say better. Again, not great, but but better than prior weeks. I really like Jalen Warren. I think he is very dynamic passing and running downs. I expect to see him probably eat into Najee's workload a little bit because he's better than Najee. He's just more dynamic. Like at the end, I don't even got to be bigger to dynamic. He's literally just more explosive, bro. He's just better. He's a better running back than Najee. It's like Pollard Zeke, bro. He's just better yeah. at this point, and which is crazy because Najee's in his third year, so he shouldn't be washed. I really <laughs> think that foot injury is just is wearing him down. Like he looks, he looks like he's running with weights on. Like, bro, he looks so <laughs> slow, bro, so slow. That running in against Cleveland where he like cut it back. I'm like, this is that's a, to the crib. Is this he a, only got I, ten yards. <laughs> bro, this looks like a a lineman running like. He, it is, yeah, Najee, it's a little bit tough for Najee. But, yeah, Jalen Warren, he definitely looks better. Like I said, definitely way more explosive. I will say, though, and this is why I never was, like, super pressed week one or week two. It's like, bro, we're playing the 49ers defense, which is arguably one of the best in football. Mm-hmm. And then the Browns defense, which is arguably one of the best in football as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like we played two you could argue top three defenses the way both those defenses are playing right now. So, yeah, I, like I wasn't surprised that our offense struggled in those two games because I think both of those defenses are legit. Um, but, I mean, we showed some promise here. Like, we still, still only scored 23 points. Like, our offense is never going to be super dynamic, super explosive, especially because Matt Canada is, like, the worst OC in the world. Like, it's – like, they were talking about it, like, through the – um like, the comments they were talking about it, it's like, yeah, like – they just sent everybody because they knew they were running up the middle with Najee. I'm like, yes, everyone in the world knew they were running up the middle with Najee on first and ten. Like the plays are so predictable, it's annoying. Bro. They just need to turn on Ask Madden, bro. I swear, like they, just, they at least gonna get variety, bro. <laughs> just switch it up, something. There's no creativity. There's nothing. So again, coaches don't like some of these coaches don't help their players out yeah. because people are just gonna say Kenny Pickett sucks, which obviously at times yeah he does, but it's like also. You're running the ball on the first and ten every time, so we're getting stuffed behind the line. So now we're in second and long. It's like always you're just not the chains. always. You're not putting guys in good position, and it's crazy that a, just a random podcaster can see that. And you're an NFL head coach, and you just can't. You you don't know that, so it's, yeah. it's it pisses me off. I'm not gonna lie, but I mean, mm-hmm. we show flashes. George Pickens is the best receiver in football, so. Sure. I mean, <laughs> so I'm always gonna hang my hat on that man. Yeah. TJ Watts the best defensive player in football, bro. He wouldn't have lost to Josh Dobbs. That's all I'm saying. That's just, that's just all I'm saying. He would he wouldn't have lost to Josh Dobbs. That's yeah. just what I'm saying. Hey, I look, I take it because <laughs> it is what happened. But uh, r- respectfully, this Pittsburgh defense looked phenomenal. Um, Levi Wallace had two picks. Pat P had one as well. Um, like I said, TJ Watt is an absolute menace, bro. <laughs> absolute menace and then bro. um i'm always blanking on the guy's name the other pass rusher holcomb yes was it no highsmith highsmith oh yeah you're right you're right, you're right. I'm the blanking. two of them are and this is still without cam hayward bro the two of them very 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 scary um pass rushers obviously you still have Minky. you have Quan alexander there now um, they made Garoppolo look very bad. Garoppolo made some very errant throws, which he the last right last thing we're gonna talk about in this game. Devontae Adams said he fed up 
And rightfully so. Rightfully so, because this man had 13 catches for 172 yards and two touchdowns, and they lost the game, bro. Like, bro, like what more do you want me to do? Stat line. <laughs> like, Literally. Um, so, so, bro, 20 targets. 20 targets. Two people with 20 targets this week can say. While Puka had 20 targets last week, like it's just the the year, the age of the receivers, man. Just like, bro, we got a stud, just give him the ball, like, right? That's it, just throwing the ball, bro. Right. Side note, why don't they use Hunter Henry? I mean, not Hunter Henry, Hunter Hunter Renfro. I don't know, I really don't understand. I'm shocked that the Jacoby Myers breakout looks as good as it is, but like, dang, you got Devontae, all these deep routes, medium, intermediate routes, he's cooking everybody on great. Jacoby's getting deep shots. He's getting similar type routes intermediate to Devontae. Bro, just let Hunter eat in the slot. Give him, give him a little, little, little zig route, little drag route, little quick little slot fade, something, little sit route. He could be just the like, short routage guy. Like let's just like right. quick little. Yeah, I don't got Darren Wall no more. He could be he could be like another tight end, basically. But they have Michael really. Mayer too, like rookie tight end. They could he's dude's I mean, from a pure physical perspective, very large guy. I think he's like mm. six. 6'4", 260. Like, they don't use him at all either. Like, it, it really is Durante and Jacoby, and that is it. Because they also don't seem to have a run game right now. Yeah, Josh Jacobs. Josh is Jacobs really... is not able to get anything going. And they were talking about it all game. <laughs> Broadcasters can't figure it out. Josh Jacobs said he can't figure it out. I, look, I don't know. But that Raiders offense needs to do something, something quick. Or Devontae Adams is not going to be there, bro. There's no point. He's way too good. He still has a case to be the best receiver in NFL. Why is he riding away on a Vegas team right now? And he's older. It's not like he has all oh, like five to seven years left. Like at any moment, like Father Time could hit these older receivers, man. He can get all one right. soft tissue injury and it could be wraps. Or he can get one, God forbid, knock on wood, like big injury, like ACL mm-hmm. or something like that. And this could be a wrap. So it's like, I under- fully understand why he doesn't want to waste his time in the Raiders, especially because the main reason he went to the Raiders or one of the, the, one of the two main reasons is not even there no more. Like he wanted to play with his boy, Derek Carr. Right. So see, yeah, there's no point in just wasting his talent, bro. hundred percent. Honestly, then that's the, that's the thing with the Raiders. They just seem like they just waste a lot of talent. Max Crosby over there is just, is a beast to losing what that, it don't matter. And what is going on with Chandler Jones right now, bro? He's his CTE acting up, bro. Bro, what? I like whatever's going on, bro. I hope he's good because it 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 just looks like a weird situation all around between him and the ownership and the GM. I don't know, but that needs to get resolved because it's it's weird, bro. He was saying just some weird. I don't even like. I don't know. He, he wrote a note out and took a picture of it and posted it. I don't. It just the whole situation is. Yeah, it, I have bad, weird vibes, bro. I don't, it, the NFL need to get to investigate, and I don't like what, what's coming out, bro. For real. Um, we're going to rapid fire through these last games so we can definitely have time to get through the NBA rumor mill. Um, before we do that, I'm going to shout out, want to sponsor the show, haven't done it in a while, SeatGeek. Now that we're well into the NFL season, I know y'all are trying to go to games. SeatGeek is going to be the number one place to get the best value for your tickets. As always, they're going to be grading every single deal on their app. Some of them are going to be in the lower end, twos, threes, fours. They're going to be color-coded, red or orange. They're not going to be the best deals, but you're also going to see some for eight, nine, maybe a 10 out of 10 deal. Those are going to be best bang for your buck. You know you're getting the best value and going to get great seats to a great NFL game. So if you are on SeatGeek, you're going to the NFL. Like we said, NBA season coming around the corner preseason in about 10 days. Be sure to use code off the glass for $20 off your first Seat Geek order. That's all one word off the glass. $20 off your first order. Go ahead, get you some concessions, pay for parking, whatever. Just keep a little extra bread in your pocket. So shout out to Seat Geek for, for sponsoring the pod and definitely use them and use our promo code. Rapid fire through these last games that we haven't covered 49ers 30, Giants 12 on Thursday night football. Anything big to take away, this Niners defense looks as good as they have every single week. Boom. Simple. Right. We, yeah. said, we said without Saquon, it was going to be a struggle. It was a struggle. Yep. Browns 27, Titans 3. Deshaun Watson getting it going a little bit, maybe. Thoughts? Hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. Hope not. But, yeah, bro, I've been saying, like, if I wasn't a Steelers fan, I'd be a huge fan of this Browns defense, man. They were really good. 
Like that defense is really good. And t- side note, Titans suck. Yeah, Derek Ryan Henry. Tannehill, 13 of 25, 104 yards. Um, bench him, please. Now, <laughs> also, really quick, Derrick Henry, 11 carries, 20 yards. We concerned? Very much so. He's dealing with an injury, and he's also old as dirt. All right. So, we, we, yeah. We, people have talked about it. seemed like he was the one running back that was beating Father Time. I don't know. No, uh, it's no looking a little time. scary. No one beats the old good old father time, but uh, it's unfortunate though. Obviously, it's definitely unfortunate. Definitely. Well, I mean, he's getting to that point. He's done everything. He's actually up. To, if we're talking about the closest thing to beating father time, he's up there because he was still playing at a very high level. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, injuries, all them touches. He has so many carries, bro. So much wear and tear. It's like this is bound to happen. But even if even if he is washed, great career. Side note, I feel like you you remember that uh the show on ESPN's NFL primetime when they're running through the clips that da na 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 da 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 na that little music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we need to play this. Are we doing the rap? <laughs> <laughs> you need to make uh, that voice of that guy. Chris <laughs> Burma. Yeah. Rumbling. 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 <laughs> nope. Circles the wagons. Like Buffalo Bills. Bro, that's my childhood. That just be yo, bro. It was so clean, bro. I just got behind. Uh, um he got too many good one-liners, bro. The Raiders. Like, it's, it's so crazy. I want to watch that now. That's funny. Uh, next game, Lions 20, Falcons 6. Um, Jared Goff throws for 243. Jameer Gibbs puts up 80 uh, yards on the ground and only gets one catch. Mon Ra, 12 targets, 102 yards. Um, seems like a solid outing for this Lions team. Goff threw another pick, though. He went – However many snaps in a row without throwing one. Now he's thrown two in back-to-back weeks. Yeah. Not going to lie, I didn't watch much of this game. I'm going to be completely honest with you. They <laughs> never was, like never, was uh, never close. Uh, come back here, all 18 points for the Packers coming in the fourth quarter, and they come back down 17 against the Saints, who it seems like maybe without Derek Carr for a – unknown period of time it seems like it's an ac joint injury which for those of y'all i don't know and I, I think it's his throwing shoulder as well really a pain tolerance thing you can play through it you're not going to make it worse but again in a position where you literally are using your arm exclusively going to be very very tough for him to be able to play through that so i mean interesting for the saints they are getting uh alvin Kamara back this week but they do blow a 17 point lead like i said all in the fourth quarter to this green bay team who is also Two and one now behind Jordan Love. Jordan Love just looks like um honestly what I expected. I thought he I was a big fan. I thought he was gonna be good. Again, didn't watch him play in college. No, no proof of this. Just got the feeling. I was like, yeah, he might be good. He got the it to him. But um, yeah, it looked good. But I also thought that he was gonna miss some throws here and there, maybe have some bad games here and there. Like I thought he was gonna look like I thought he would look like a good rookie. Obviously, I know mm-hmm. he's not a rookie. Like, this is his first year fully starting. I thought he would make, look like a really good rookie. Really good games, really good throws, some bad games, some bad throws, some missed throws. That's what he looks like. So, shout out to him. Shout out to the Packers. Hopefully getting Aaron Jones and Christian Watson back. That's yep. definitely, definitely going to help. And the Saints defense is, like, really, really good as well. So Yeah. So, really good Huge. games. Uh, next one we got J-Bow. here. Yeah, you know I'm always excited to watch James Winston play football. He's going to sling that rock, baby. That's all I need him to do. I'm good batter. Pick. Right. 30 good, touchdown. Good batter, indifferent. He's going to throw it. He's going to throw I it, can't, I can't ask for more as a football fan, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the battle of what were two 0-2 teams in, I believe this game was in Minnesota. Someone had to drop to 0-3. That would be the Vikings. They fall 24-28 to against the Chargers. Justin Herbert goes 40 for 47, 405 on their head with three touchdowns. And Keenan Allen said 18 catches, 20 targets, 215 yards wasn't enough. He got to throw for a touchdown too, 49-yard touchdown pass to Mike Williams, who get well soon, obviously has the the ACL injury, which is a big, big blow. But um, look. This Minnesota team, we said that they were fraudulent. They're looking excruciatingly fraudulent right now, starting the season 0-3. Again, I can't, you cannot even really fault Kirk's performance. 32 of 50, 367 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Their O-line is not helping him out whatsoever. He was sacked four times in this game, hurried a bunch more, lots of pressure in his face at all times. But 
And he's getting the ball to around the field. Jettas with seven catches. TJ with eight. Jordan Addison with six. Madison had five catches. I mean, I, I don't know what more you can really ask from him. They need to show up the O-line. They need to get their defense in check because, I mean, the season is going to get away from them really quickly, and it may already have at this point. What I take away from this game is that Brandon Staley almost lost his game as well. He Brandon surely Staley did. An idiot. He's trying to go for it on four for one. But if you, if you don't punt the ball, like what? Almost through the game. So it's like he's also still in the hot seat. I don't care what I don't care if you just won this game. He's still in the hot seat. 100 percent should still be in the hot seat, bro. Yeah. So uh yeah, Jesse Herbert is the greatest quarterback of all time. It's never his fault. I don't care what no one says. Yeah. So my takeaways. <laughs> <laughs> uh next game we got here. Bills 37, Commanders three. Um, we we're talking about how good oh, Sam Howell looked. You could tell me how good Sam Howell looked against the Broncos. He looked absolutely awful against this <laughs> Buffalo defense. 19 for 29, no touchdowns, four interceptions. He was sacked nine times. My goodness, he got mauled in this game. Buffalo is looking to put it together after what was a horrible start for them on Monday Night Football. I don't know if there's any real takeaways other than just defense is as legit as ever. Their offense is doing what they need to be doing. I got one. My boy James Cook is nice, man. My he boy is. James Cook is nice. But uh, actually, one of my takeaways is literally just the fact that I think we all overreacted for week one. I think the Jets are Josh Allen's kryptonite because obviously if Josh Allen plays better, they win that game anyways. And that's against a stout Jets defense. So, right. Yeah, I think Bills are still one of the top teams in the AFC. For sure. Um, Colts, go on the road and win in overtime. A little Minshew mania. Um, obviously, uh, AR was still in concussion protocol, so he goes 27 for 44, 227 and a touchdown. Um, and the Ravens, questionable call there, I think, in was it in overtime. What looked yep. to me like pass interference doesn't get called. Colts get the ball back and are able to go ahead. And I think Matt Gay hit three or four 50 plus yard field goals. Mm hmm. Um, in this game, um, including the game winner. Um, yeah, Colts go on the road and steal a game that really they had no business winning. Um, Lamar played uh, above average, uh, 101 on the ground. Is I mean, like he was clipping them seven yards of carry. He looked as elusive as ever. Um, passing game, him and Zay Flowers look to be a great connection. Mark Andrews is coming online now off the injury, so – I said, you know, that call goes a different way. You could say that about a lot of, a lot of, really any scenario. Um, maybe the the Ravens are three and zero, but they do drop this one to Minshew and the Colts. Yeah. Um, another one here: Seahawks thirty seven, Panthers twenty seven. Andy Dalton um, gets to start with the Bryce Young injury. Um, Geno Smith looked solid. This passing attack definitely looked better. Um, Kenneth Walker and Charbonnet. This was like the first game they were like a little bit of a one two punch. Both of them looked very good. I think Kenneth Walker had 5.4 yards per carry. Charbonnet came great. in. Charbonnet came in and had 5.1. That's exactly what people were expecting. And I think we'll see them get to a healthy balance between the two of them to keep both of them, you know, keep the tread off of their tires. They both can be dynamic in their own way. So um, I liked what I saw from their, their rushing attack in this game. Um, and I think the last one or last two we haven't covered both the Monday night games, Eagles 25 Buccaneers 11, the Baker Mayfield start to the season looks to have come to a slight halt. They're now two and one, the Eagles three and oh, in three games where they definitely have not played. I don't even want to say good to great level of football, which you can take that two different ways. Maybe that means that if, as they get more comfortable and kind of get more settled with their new coordinators, it's only going to get, you know, you really can only go up from here or maybe they just aren't the team that they were last year. Only time will really tell. Um, but Jalen's passing has definitely not looked at the same level that it was. Barely the decision making um, from last year. But at the end of the day, when you got the tush push and you got the Swifty himself, who's going to stop you? We are real Swifties because that's down there Swift. Till death, I'm gonna rock mm -hmm. with my guy. Lions did him dirty. I'm gonna rock with my guy. But yeah, the Eagles need to pick it up, bro. I don't care if they're three and all. They have not looked good. Like, be honest with you, they, no, really they looked, looked bad. And they've got a look, got a nice stretch still of schedule. They're going 
to LA to play the Rams and they're in New York to play the Jets. Then they do play the Dolphins on Sunday night. Then they go to Washington to play the Commanders and then play Dallas. So they still have a couple more games where I think they can get away with not playing great football and still being able to win those games. So yeah. interesting to see how they continue on because, like you said, they definitely are not playing up to the standards that they had last year. And then the last game that wrapped up week three, doubleheader on Monday night, which do you like the doubleheaders? I'm not a fan. No, I don't like the doubleheaders because it's annoying. I got to watch one on my phone and I got to watch one on the TV. No, right. I hate the doubleheaders, actually. They right. need to play – either do them, like, back-to-back, -back, meaning just six hours of football. We already do it on Sundays. <laughs> or just have one game. Like, I don't like the – they're playing at the same time. It's annoying. Right. Uh, last game, though, Bengals do finally get in the win column. Joe Burrow goes in and thugs it out with the calf injury, but does not play well. Like, from a stat perspective and visually watching him, did not look, again, to be the Joe Burrow that people were expecting coming into this season. Uh, went 26 for 49 for 259 with an interception, no touchdowns. He did get Jamar Chase going finally. Um, God. really in the, the second half of this game. T. Higgins, still, the production is not there. He's it's just a connection has looked off between T. Higgins and Joe Burrow to start the year. Yeah. Um, but like I said, they go in, they thug it out in a, a tough game. They were able to keep the case maybe for the best start to a rookie receiver in NFL history. Um, with Puka, kept him in check, only seven targets, five catches. Um, Stafford, being the gunslinger that he is, sometimes you have to live with some of his throws. He ends up throwing two picks in this game, which were, were pretty costly. Um, and, and the Bengals do eke this one out by three points. And uh, on a night where Chad Johnson got inducted into the Bengals Hall of Fame ring of honor that they've got over there in Cincinnati. Any final takeaways from week three of the NFL season? Jamar Chase is finally alive. Um, other than that, no, nah, nah, should be good. It was a good week. Good week of football. A lot of, like crazy, explosive plays, like big performances. It was a, it was a crazy week. I'm not gonna lie. It was fun. Very, very fun. Definitely. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the final off season rumor mill. We are going to be doing. We're going to be getting more back into the basketball content with. The preseason just around the corner. Um, we're going to be able to have some exciting interviews coming up. Be able to get some some really good you know analysis from some firsthand people who are working closely with NBA organizations. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, but let's get into the last rumor mill um, of the off season, which has been dominated like it's been the entire off season with Damian Lillard trade talks. I'm literally have the Bleacher Report app pulled up and. At, Every single one of these stories somehow is linked to Damian Lillard. Like, it's really crazy. Um, but a lot of that has been fueled by a report where those multiple NBA GMs are basically all but certain that Damian Lillard will not be a Portland Trailblazer by media day, which is October 2nd um, for pretty much every single team in the NBA. So you're looking at a, just about a week, a little over a week, they are expecting him to be moved. The typical suitors are the ones that have been mentioned. Obviously, the Heat, those talks seemingly continue to just stall out. Um, two newer names have emerged. I did see one where the Suns were involved, and the one that has actually been the newest and I would say most interesting of this entire timeline of where is he going, who's going to trade for him, the Toronto Raptors are apparently seriously, seriously considering trying to trade for Damian Lillard, are willing to give up both Scotty Barnes and first-round pick Grady Dick in that deal, um, and want to go in and potentially try to be able to pair him with both Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi. And uh, to me, Needle is definitely moved if they're able to keep both of those guys um, in, in Toronto and bring in Damian Lillard. Whether Damian Lillard stays or immediately requests a trade like it's been rumored, who knows? I, I don't think Masai would make that decision if that wasn't the case. But we saw what he did with the last guy who definitely didn't want to be there. He wanted to mess around and won a championship. So <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't bet against him. But what do you think about 
this last round of Damian Lillard rumors. It's so exhausting. I'm like, I want this guy to just get traded already. It's so annoying. But I mean, I mean if he goes to Toronto, I mean, if he goes to Toronto, is solid. Like, I don't, I still don't think they're like a top. I was not like a champion. They're going to win the championship, nothing like that. But it's better than what they have been. They're just, they're not going to be that just middle of the pack, not bad, not good. Like, you're making a move to like go somewhere, which is always good. Like, it's always good to just make a move in either direction. Either you're just going to tank or you're just going to be really good. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I like it. Again, it's just a matter of like, is Damian Lillard going to want to play there? Like, he's been talking about, oh, yeah, I only want to go to Miami. That's it. I only want to go to Miami. So, like, I would hate for him to go somewhere and then just be disgruntled and not want to be there. It's like, bro, honestly, I really kind of just want him to go to the Heat. So, I, cause I can actually kind of want to see this Heat team with Damian Lillard. Like, I feel like they've been one offensive piece away for so long. So, him, them getting Damian Lillard would be amazing. But again, just trade the guy, please. please. Like, I, we're begging trade. you as an NBA fan. I'm, I, bro, please. I'm begging you, let the man free, bro. Please. And it's like, I don't. I don't want to hear the story anymore. I don't want to hear the maybe like trade him. Like this is a little bit right. better because it's more like okay, they're gonna move him between this stuff. Or the multiple time. GM report gives me hope that it's like yeah, all these dudes saying, bro, we he's not gonna be there by media day. Yeah, that's giving me like all right, y'all know something that was not available to the public. Yeah, exactly. So like that is a little bit better. But again, trade him. <laughs> just trade the guy please trade him mm-hmm. and so you can go on with your rebuild and he can go on with his trying to win a ring um another interesting note here uh the Suns apparently may still be interested in trading deandre a and if yusuf nurkic becomes available and essentially be swapping those two which to me is crazy because nurkic is one of the worst defensive centers in the nba especially since his injury which is like I'm not understanding the logic between going from Aiden, who's well, at least definitely in the playoffs, not an elite defensive center at all, pretty much a negative on the defensive side of the ball in a lot of instances. Going and getting a guy who's probably worse. It's like, bro, I'd rather just take my chances with the possible the upside of Aiden. Like, hopefully, right. maybe Vogel turns into a good defender. It's like you know, your or your isn't a good defender. Right. Well, at least take the chance with Aiden if if you're gonna go that route. So mm-hmm. that, I mean I still feel like they should have traded Aiden. I should trade Aiden, but like not for that. I don't think that's the way to go. Definitely, definitely, definitely not. I'm seeing stuff jazz involved in multi-team deals, potentially trying to get um uh, Damian Lillard moved. It seems like the whole NBA, like not just the, games, like the front office <laughs> we're is like, like we're tired going. of this. All right, yeah, we'll we help. Will right, pitch come on. We don't even want him. We just right. want to have it done, bro. Right. Come on. We'll pitch in fine. We'll throw a pick or something. Like just get it going. Get it, get it over with. James Harden still hopeful that he will be traded to the Clippers. I forgot about that guy. All right. <laughs> we're gonna get to, to media day and training camp for the Sixers and I'm ready. Oh, I am ready. I'm ready for awkward. all the drama. It's gonna get awkward real quick. It's the oh, fast yeah. gonna, yo, he gonna pull up been like a look like he 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he gonna pull up so out of shape, bro. It's gonna be so funny. But yeah, I don't even know where they go in this scenario because James Harden is just like you said it before, he's just not the guy you wanna have a I don't care contest with. Like he's just mm-hmm. He's going to make it awkward for you. <laughs> He's going to make you make that decision that you don't want to make. So I'm actually curious to see where this goes. I, I just – I don't see a world where it ends good for the Sixers, bro. <laughs> no. Uh, there's no world where he's just like, all right, fine. Yeah, let's do it. Let's play. And it's not like a – like I, and he, like, actually means it. Like, he's going to go hard. He's going to, like, go to, like, work in the gym, stay in shape. Like, if he does that, it's going to be I'm out of shape or, like, I'm half ass and Like, I'm not really – I'm not really out there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, Dwight Howard sounded like was going to be signed by the Golden State Warriors, which I think would have been a good signing for them. They actually needed that. And then they pass on it. And so he's probably just going to be overseas again. Still so many questions around this entire Golden State roster. I can't wait for their media day. I just can't wait till they announce who's starting. The reports have been saying that Chris Paul started. But what I will say is, I'm glad they didn't get Dwight Howard. Be, 
strictly for the reason of going on Twitter and seeing Warriors fans posting Orlando Magic Dwight Howard clips talking about some Obama we, administration highlights. Talking about some we got him. You don't got him. Not him. <laughs> you don't got him. Definitely <laughs> not, bro. You gotta post him in Taiwan. Yeah, I got yeah. him. <laughs> I think I saw a clip from the Bush administration. I'm like, bro, this is nuts, bro. Like, bro, what do you got? Y'all are, NBA, I'm be honest. NBA fans are sick, bro. Y'all 100%. are sick. Oh my god, my whole off season on my Twitter has just been debates and discrediting this guy. And di- y'all be bored, bro. I'm be honest. Why, let me. I'll be bored. Let me ask you a question. If Chris Paul is starting, right, the, the thought process has always been you put Looney on the bench. But maybe all along it's been Chris Paul at the one, Steph at the two, Clay on the bench. And then you have Wiggins, Dre, Looney. Thoughts on that as a potential lineup for the Warriors? Something I think Kerr should try. It's better. It's well, definitely better than the alternative of, of having yeah. all three of them on the court. But – um. You lose some size. The backcourt, like, that's two people, though, you can attack on defense. People attacking Clay right now, though. Like, I don't – not true. no disrespect, but, like, again, after the injuries, he has not been to the level of defender that he's been in the past. Like I said, Steph is always going to give the effort in the passing. At least going to have two small guards who – Offensively. Try to good. get some steals, right? Offensively, I think it helps that you have a more traditional rim roller – for Chris Paul, I think even if they go super small, Chris Paul will make it work with his IQ. But it, it's it's going to be interesting. But that's something that I don't think I've seen anybody really talk about. But I, that's a fair lineup to try is why not put Clay on the bench and see what this looks like. At least Clay, I will say, at least Clay is like still like what six six, six right. seven. So yeah. it's like even if he's going to attack, like he at least has the size for it. I actually seen a report the other day that um they're actually thinking about putting Steph Curry off the bench, and they're gonna start yeah. with, with Chris Paul, Clay, okay. against Draymond and Looney, and just have because you know Steph, you saw what he did when he was off the bench. You I know can't what I'm deny saying? it, he, injury, bro. he was, he was looking like six minute a year. year. Yeah, he looking like <laughs> six minute a year. I just year, really bro. feel like they need that spark plug, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, but no, I, I I definitely like that better than the other than the alternative of having a what was that a Looney on the bench? That can't go, not at all. I, I agree. Um, Brian Windhorst went on NBA Today and said he predicts that Giannis's next contract will not be with the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, I'm not super sure how much of this could play potentially into the fact that Drew Holiday has hinted at not signing another NBA contract and just retiring after this one ends, which I believe has two years left. Mm-hmm. So that window now definitely would have a cap if he's being serious about that. Um, additionally, you know, they've got the new coach granted Giannis obviously was in on that entire decision-making process. So this is a guy he's comfortable with, but you know, if it doesn't pan out some level of skepticism, skepticism around the league that he may be movable or on the move, um, because of, of the circumstances there in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, it all comes down to them building a championship team around them. Like, can they make the right moves to stay a contender? Uh, to even if even if Drew say Drew Holiday goes something like that, can you just make the, the smart moves to keep this a championship level team and build a good enough team around Giannis? Which will be tough because we said it. Like the players there that they have are old. Mm-hmm. Um, like they they can be on the, like declining a little bit. They are a little bit older. So I mean, it's tough. It's definitely tough, but. At the end of the day, you want to keep your superstar happy, you got to do what you got to do. He sounds like all he cares about is winning a ring. And I don't care if it's here. I don't care if it's over there. I don't care who it's with. I just want to win a ring. Speaking of the Bucks, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark Spears reports from ESPN that uh, the Bucks have also now thrown their name in the Damian Lillard sweepstakes. I don't know what that pass package could possibly look like. I don't think they, they don't have any first round picks to like 2028. So like, wow. what could you that, even though. give? It'd be oh, great, but like, what could you give Portland? I would love that, bro. That was like, I mean, we used to do it when we did the TikToks, and I was like, when we tried to pair, like, who's the best superstar to put around Giannis? I said Damian Lillard. That would be amazing. Oh my mm-hmm. god! But I, there's, there's no world where that's possible, in my opinion. Like, unless it would have to be. Can, a, 
Because it has to be a super facilitated, like three team, four team deal where like they're getting assets from somewhere else. Yeah, because there's just no way somebody's getting pennies because <laughs> there's just no way that's going to work yeah. out. Yeah. Um, Austin Reeves, your boy. Apparently, he wondered about what it would be like to play with Wemby out here in San Antonio before he re- ended up re signing with the Lakers. I mean, Loyalty if, questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but nah, if he um, if he didn't resign with the Lakers, I, I actually probably would have liked that though. Like, I would like to see him on that team playing with Wimby. I feel like it'd been a nice piece there too. It'd been a like nice little piece to have with Wimby. Um, obviously, I mean it's the Lake Show. You can't say no to the Lake Show, so, <laughs> so he, he wasn't gonna say no. But if he did say no, I I wouldn't be mad at that second destination. I feel like he'd I feel like he fit right in there. I feel like he'd be really good in like just in that culture. I feel like I would love him over there. You know what I'm saying? You know, I know you're an honorary Spurs fan. I know y'all love him. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he would. I think he would have turned over. He would have had even more room to spread his rings and and start scoring. That's what I say. He would have had a bigger season. That yeah. the whole remember we were saying the hot takes like all oh, Lakers might have three All Stars. I think he legitimately it still would have been like a slim chance, but he yeah. would have had a better chance, chance. if he actually yeah. went to San Antonio. Definitely more opportunity. Uh, last couple I got here: the Miami Heat are keeping an eye on Giannis, who again going back to what I just said may potentially come available. The Heat, who haven't really done much this off season. And every rumor are now apparently also trying to get Giannis if that becomes an option as well. I just don't want no perimeter scoring. I see. <laughs> just mm-hmm. like, are we just going to – the paint, though, defense? Who is scoring? There's no one scoring anywhere. But I I don't know. I don't like the fit. But at the end of the day, it's Giannis. You don't, I don't care about the fit. Like, we're just going to make it work and when that player is that great. But I, a lot of, I feel like a lot of teams that just be like, yeah, we're throwing our name in the hat is just like – Exactly that, like right. That's why, <laughs> yo. If, if we gave y'all so and so and so and so, like, what, just like, what's the vibe on that? <laughs> that's that's like when we do a fantasy. Why well, just send you a dumb trade? Just right. like, ah, let me just do. Let me just test the waters. That's right. what they do. Like, let me just yeah. throw my name in the hat. Yeah, I, this, that's really crazy. That's really like with GMing in fantasy. Like people do that in real life with real players. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, bro, you think if I give you like Tyler Hero, you will slide me like Luca? Like, yeah, nah. Was, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but, bro, what if I gave you three first, bro? We we got some, or like, <laughs> it's it's motion or no? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they just try to see if they got him like drunk at the moment or something like that. Right. Like, <laughs> like, call him on vacation in Cabo. Right. You like, oh. yeah, I mean, whatever, bro. Just send it through, bro. Watch, just <laughs> <handle it. laughs> uh, last one I got here, Buddy Hield, who I think was insulted by the Pacers extension offer. Rumored to potentially be going to get traded. Their GM came out and tried to shut that down, but uh, Shams is saying that Buddy was definitely insulted and he's open to a trade um, because there is no deal currently set. Buddy still, regardless of any other aspects of the game, one of the best and consistently one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA, um, both from a efficiency and volume perspective. Um, a lot of teams could definitely utilize Buddy Hield very well, but I think he fits very well on this Pacers roster. So I know they will hope they can figure something out because we both think it's something brewing there in Indiana for sure. I would love to see him alongside Holly. I feel like Holly's going to like find him open looks like very, very easily. But again, like you said, I just think there also is a whole bunch of teams that could use. It. I mean, everybody could use a great shooter like that. Pretty much everybody. Like you see, he was in the Lakers was in that trade rumor talk for I don't know how long. Like he was always in them talks, so but not just them, like all the contending teams. It's just a lot of teams that I feel like can use him as a player. So, like I said, I do hope it works out because I just want to see the Pacers team the way it is now. I want to see how it would look, first of all. I just want to see they're gonna be young, they're gonna be running up and down, they're gonna be shooting threes, mm-hmm. they're gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch. So, I just hope that I hope they just work it out to be honest with you. 100%. Um, actually, last thing, not a rumor, you see uh, Anthony Edwards' signature shoe. Adidas, I didn't. Oh. Adidas, Siggy, go look that up. Look it up. Want see. to know your your live reaction thoughts? I had to look at it a couple of times before I could come to a decision because I low key didn't like it at first, but I think I'm I'm with it. I, I see the vision. I like it. Um, it do look kind of comfortable as These well. These with the little swirls at the bottom. Whoa, I don't know. Wait, no. Oh no, I'm bugging. Oh no, 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 no. I'm bugging. I'm bugging. I'm bugging. I'm looking at it now. 
Adidas, right? Yeah. Uh, it got like the holes and stuff on the yeah. side. Oh, that's messing with my. Uh, that's I can't wear those. That's gonna. Oh, be... you got what is it called? The the a rack... No, not that's. It starts with I'm a bugging. T, like tripophobia. Yeah, that's. Yeah, uh, nah, that's a no for me. Just off that alone, that's a no for me. But like looks wise, besides that, yeah, it would have to. I I see what you mean. It would have to grow on me. Yeah, I like I like the back and I like that that the top got that like cushiony sock kind of thing where you could really that's tighten it. Actually, when I'm looking at them on the feet, it's like I said, it took me a minute. I didn't want to rush the judgment because at first I seen them, I was like, these are fried, these are disgusting. Mm -hmm. I, I sat, let it sit, seen it a couple of different colorways, seen it on feet. I was like, hey, so they did, bro. Team players are getting, I think, way better signatures than have been in like the last decade. Because look, think about all the signatures that have come out. It's been a lot of duds, bro. For sure. It's um from the front angle on feet. I actually I like the way they look a little bit. I'm be honest. Okay. But size kind of throwing me off. It's. Uh, I, I've seen worse. I'd say that. I've seen worse signature shoes. Who do you think has the best signature shoe right now that isn't like one of the crazy OD long ones? So, like, obviously you can't say Jordan's, but you can't say LeBron's. Not no, KD's. like Kyrie's. K, no, Kyrie's, no Kyrie's KD's. either. Yeah. Um, Off the top of my head, I'm honestly not sure. I really I think I, I really like Jason Tatum's signature, which is crazy. I, really, I just typed in Jason Tatum's shoe because I needed to get another look at him. I think I would, the first person I thought of was Tatum, but I don't know enough other people's shoes to like compare him to. I, Donovan Mitchell's and Trey Young's are like whatever to me. I, the Giannis shoe is, it's not terrible. It's not the greatest. It definitely looks a little bit more bulky. Um, Ew, I don't like Trey Young shoes. Yeah, I don't like those. And then who else got one recently? Lamelo's with Puma. Mm, I wasn't feeling those too much. I think Aiden got a signature too. Ew. <laughs> 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 I like uh, a. I like Giannis is a little bit. Giannis is a, is this decent? It's a little bulky. I think that's the main complaint that a lot of people have is that they think it looks like a big man shoe. <laughs> This, these fours, these be having these big ass shoes. Like, yeah. Bron, like Bron had them, them bulky shoes. But they've years. been coming out with them, them soldier like mid low cuts. They've been looking like the nah, newest ones that've been coming out look good, bro. Yeah, they, they way better now. I'm talking about like when we was in like high school. Oh no, them just <laughs> he had the boots. like moon shoes, bro. <laughs> Huge. This man had the boots, bro. Now they definitely Lebron shoes is way better now, way better. So I they'll look way lighter. The other ones was crazy. And I think uh, if I had to go off of all of these. Oh, you know what's another underrated music. one? Mm. Bro, Paul George's. He got a nice line. Is it, yeah, 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 his is not bad. I, I almost bought some. The uh, PlayStation was colorway through. was too fire when that came out, bro. I don't like that. It was like that. Uh, Paul George nah. definitely got some nice, nice signatures. Yeah, when I was shopping for ball shoes and before I bought my Kyrie's, and Paul George is actually one of the ones I was thinking about getting. But when I put them on my feet, they just felt weird. I think I just yeah. break them in or something, but like I, I didn't want to waste my money. And B got a signature shoe with Under Armour. These are nasty. I was say, that sound gross. Ew. Oh, these look, these look generic, bro. You could have told me these was the 2Ks, bro. No, nah, that's gross. Under Armour is really like, like the whole brand right now at this point is just carried. I feel like by, uh, Steph, because like I don't even Absolutely. maybe I'm out of the loop. But when we was in high school, they had the Cam Newton high tops. They had some. They had some heat in the football world. That was football feel, though. That's oh, true. You just you just saying like Steph the is brand, carrying the brand. General, okay, like yeah. Steph is carrying it hard because like. Yeah. I don't feel like I see hype for Under Armour outside of The Rock, which is like, I guess, bro, but it's not the same as like. Under Armour got Jettas now. Do they really? As, yeah, he, he. I think he was in a new commercial for like their new. Uh, oh, dang. Or something like that. I think they got Jettas now or something like that. But you know, I bro, the Cam Newins. That's what that was my game. My game. I, bro, I'm, I still got a pair of them sitting right over there, bro. That was my they game. They were so bro. comfortable. They was light. 
it was a perfect, perfect clay. They gave you crazy ankle support without having to get it spattered. And if you got it spattered on top of that, you had the Yankees. bulletproof ankles. Yankees. Couldn't shake me. It's no. not, they ain't going nowhere. No. I used to I used to get it taped, spatted, and throw the ankle sleeve on top. I ain't rolling. Facts. Nothing, bro. Facts. <laughs> Facts, bro. Yeah. But not. Nah. Well, you know who she's saying? I kind of like a little bit. I like Jaws. I think Jaws yeah. are back. Yeah. All the, every signature shoe that I feel like tries to take elements of Kobe's um, comes out looking clean. Because even, bro, Sabrina Ionescu's clean shoe. If you've not oh, seen I got, hers. I got to look those up. I think I've seen those before. I remember clean, that name. They look like Kobe's, which makes sense because she, her and Kobe was close. Yes, like, I remember. These are clean. Those bro. are one of the best signatures, period. Like, it, yeah, in general. like I think these are, man, these are fire. OD, bro. You know, I'll rock with those. Those are fire. Um, I think across the board, though, uh, Jordan, y'all need to step it up, bro. Uh, the, the Tatum was a, a good, you know, that's a good step up because outside of that, bro, them, you ever seen, like, the Westbrooks, bro? <laughs> like, gross. Nasty. The Westbrooks. Lucas does not, like, looks whatever, like, it just is they whole line always be has been mid to me. I'm gonna be honest, bro. It's gonna be tough in general for like I mean, I don't know, I don't know what it takes for a shoe line to take off. Like, I don't know what it was about the Kyrie's or the KDs that just like hit. But now it seems like like you said, if you don't make a shoe that's not l- takes things from those or looks like those. It's not gonna like hit and stick, you know what I mean? Like people are gonna be wearing Kyrie's forever. People are gonna be wearing Kobe's, KD's. Like people are gonna wear them shoes all the time. But like mm-hmm. people that try to be out of the box with their shoe, it just looks so different that people are like, ah, I don't know if I like it. You know? Right? I don't know. I I don't know how you get to that point of like, yeah, these are gonna stick. Like obviously, no one's ever gonna be Jordan. Like Jordan's right. is those are gonna those are those are not even basketball shoes. This is literally just wear them, but. Did you ever like Mellows growing up? I used to think Mellows actually was decent. Uh, not really, honestly. I Dang. never really was a huge fan. I don't think they're ugly, up. but I I never was a big fan of them. Let me go look up, look up Freak Man Zion One. These is oh my gosh, these is so trash, bro. <laughs> this is just not it. Yeah, Jordan. I don't know whoever made the Tatum's. I need to get with them and only work with them, bro, because. The rest of the line is not it right now. The Doncic's do not look like it. The Westbrooks always look crazy. Are you not rocking with uh with Austin Reeves signature shoe, bro? You're not rocking. What? I don't even know what brand. I was just about to ask you what company, <laughs> what company is it again. It's, I don't uh, even know what brand. You hold up, bro. It's like you, 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 brand. See, you seen Montrez Harrell signature? You gotta be kidding me! Who? Why is everyone getting a signature shoe, bro? Why bro, not? Nah, he do, he doing it the smart way, bro. You go what? and sign with a brand that's not you feel me, like super big. He he had a signature he not with, super big. <laughs> dude, that's <laughs> the point, bro. But don't, hold up, who got it? Somebody got a deal with M One. I, I thought it was him. Let me double check. Okay, Brian, somebody, if you was like a if you was like a bum, not even like a, like. If he's like Montrezl, he's not a bum, but like he obviously he's not like a starter or not like that. Yeah. Would you like sign with like a, a a super low company like that just to get a signature shoe, just to say you have a signature shoe? And then like, just, and I know you're getting a bigger bag. I know you're getting yeah. a bigger bag. So it's like just like all right, like I'm wearing my shoe. People be like, and no, you probably be the only person in the world with them shoes, but they, they, they at least you got your own shoe. Also, yo, I thought N one shoes used to be the for me the the value option. Why Nothing is about you. 120, bro. That's Kyrie's. <laughs> like, Nothing that's is literally the price of Kyrie's. And nah, one. Bro. Now, we're, this is crazy, bro. Inflation is nuts. Nah, man. I've been wearing the same car. I was just hooping today. Wearing the same Kyrie's I had since like four or five years ago. I need to upgrade, but still. They work, though. I was cooking. Who got the worst? Like, I'm trying to think. Somebody got to have the worst NBA player to, like, have a signature shoe. Oh, yeah. Somebody put up a list right here. Joe Kim Noah. That's gross. I mean, he's not the worst, though. He can't be the worst. 
Montez Hill got one. Yeah, Chandler Parsons got one with, with Anta. He wasn't bad these, either. These look like Nike Hyper Dunks, uh, just without the swoosh. Al Harrington, protege. He wasn't bad either. These are all better than Trez. Than Tre- yeah. Michael Carter Williams. Okay, you lost me. <laughs> what? Oh, nah, he, wait, what? <laughs> oh, these are with Lai Ning. The junk is literally called the MCW Men Professional Basketball Shoe. <laughs> That's the official <laughs> name. Bro. That's crazy. Uh, Evan Turner got one with Brass Monkey. Yo, what are these brands, bro? People just be partnering with anybody, any and everybody. As Luis, long as you throw back. Luis Scola. Shout out to him, bro. <clears throat> International Argentinian legend. Who got isn't, he, isn't, he, Anta. isn't he playing? Like, wasn't he playing until he was like 50? Bro, that midi was always a bucket on the court and in 2K. I used to give people fits. I respect it. Him, Tyrus Thomas, and Brandon Bass. That was an era of fours bro, that I used bro. to go crazy with in 2K, bro. The super small, like 6'9", four. Right. Bro. That had, like, bro, that jump was like Middies, though. C, C inside, A mid-range, F three-point. All <laughs> they did. Bro, 15 feet in, I'm greening everything, bro. Elbow was a bucket. Mm-hmm. Jimmer for debt, bro. Spalding shoe. Nah, this is crazy. He got the ratchet on him, bro. He deserves a shoe. He got the ratchet on him. Uh, we're getting down to you the talk about, you want to talk about people I used to cook with in 2K. Jimmer for debt was one mm-hmm. of the ones. He definitely was. Matthew Delvadova, he had the deli ones. All right, he's the worst. <laughs> he takes the game. <laughs> the, the deli ones. Number one, Bryant Big Country Reeves. What? Who? Who? Yo, the shoe deal was with Warner Brothers. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Wait, nah. Nah, I need to Google this one. Bryant Reeves. This is bad podcasting. <laughs> we just going through this right now. But oh, no, I it it could be a TikTok, though. We, we Bryant, actually put the, the, the video up there. 100%. Bryant picture. Reeves WB shoes. This is crazy. Yo, who even is this guy? This dude is not an NBA player. You can't. <laughs> you cannot convince me. Now I gotta. Now I feel like I'm about to get disrespectful, but I gotta go look at buddy's buddy's stats, bro. Bro, we good, bro. It's our podcast, bro. We can do whatever we want, bro. Oh no, bro. Bro is a career twelve and a half point per game score, seven rebounds. He's you don't solid. know ball, clearly. Casual. Clearly. This guy's a casual. I, I must be, bro. You heard of Bryant Big Country Reeves? Yeah, bro. He, bro. What? You don't know Brian Reeves, bro? You're a casual. You just started watching the NBA. What last year? What team he played for? It's one of the thirty. <laughs> 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 and that's where he get you because he was in the league before it was 30 teams. <laughs> yeah, bro played, know, bro look like, bro played his whole career on the Vancouver Grizzlies, bro. That's wild. Hey, he yeah, I can't look, I can't cap on 13 points per game, seven rebounds. You solid, bro. Best year he put up 16, 16, 8, and 2 with a block. I Good respect job, it. Man. I respect it. Shout out Brian Reeves. Shout out. Warner Brothers, that shoe is disgusting. Oh, man, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Like I said, with basketball right around the corner, we are about to get into more and more of these mixed episodes or may potentially get more content out, mix and match the NFL, the NBA. Man, it's the best time of the year. It's going to be sports on every day, every single day, and I cannot, cannot wait for it. Um, if you made it all the way to the end of the episode, we appreciate you as always. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, go ahead, pull your phone out, go over to the audio platform, leave us a five-star rating, and pre-download the show to your phone. It's free. Helps us out a ton with the algorithm, so we appreciate that as always. I'm Billy Das Dame, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.